like an activation or something? There was an activation fee included in there, yes. And the bill included the 10 days of January. So it was actually the bill, bill counted for 41 days total, I think it was. Okay. I mean, all right. So inherently, it's probably closer to like 300, which just sounds like a normal house. 300 yeah, for electric? Holy. You got to keep in mind that the, the, the jacuzzi has to be running 24-7, right? <sighs> right. Dude, Are you, you better... gas at all? Is anything gas? No. no. Jesus. I did put a schedule on my heating, so I, don't, I barely heat the, the cellar or the second floor, like the, the uh, bottom floor there, because we don't use it. And then I've uh, scheduled heating so that between like 1 a.m. and 6 a.m., there's the rooms don't get heated up. Like they go down to like 15 degrees, 16 degrees before they, they kick back up in the morning again. Because we're always, you know, well, everyone but be sleeping under the covers. They don't need to heat up the rooms. You, saves you a don't lot. sleep anywhere. You don't sleep anywhere, but you're- well, I got you're 23 shit, degrees in my office though. <laughs> Dude, speaking of sleeping, what I want to know is, Aaron, how did you do? How did you handle the sleeping? You did. You're 20 days in, right? So the subathon right now is paused during the podcast, but yeah, we are 20 days in right now. And I, uh, at the beginning, said that the timer will go as long as I am on camera. So I have been sleeping in my studio. Brilliant. So we just highlight. I have a. I have a. I have a sleep camera. I have a sleep camera. That's and at first really... it was a little uh a little, little different having people watch you sleep but then it's like you're so tired it's like it doesn't even matter and <laughs> out cold did you do the thing where if it bits come in or something it like wakes you up as an alarm i've seen these like TikTok streams no, where the dudes i was talking like, oh, to gazzy i was talking to gazzy like, about gazzy? that the air horn i didn't do the <laughs> air horn i was like you know what like after 18, 20 hours a day, there's no amount of bit donations that is worth waking me up at that <laughs> nighttime. Also, where my studio is, it's around my kid's bedroom, and I don't want my misery uh, to be their misery. Not fair. So I decided you not to You wear earbuds. You can charge wireless earbuds before oh, you go to my bed, gosh. and then you really get your phone notification. It was funny. I was like, that that's what I could do. Terrible. I could just – I can – Put on the air horn, but then just sleep with like, yeah, earmuffs or something. But I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. So I didn't do it. I ended up not doing it. But yeah, uh, today is 20 days. Uh, we're at 491 hours streamed. And oh, the clock counting. is and the clock is currently at 19 hours. The clock's at 19 hours. Chat is saying they're going to bomb me today. But uh, I don't know. Right now, there's less than I, a day. I, I, I hope chat doesn't bomb you until you have 30 minutes left. They're already there. Supposedly, there's some side chats that I'm not a part of that they're uh, they're transpiring. They're transpiring. I leave on vacation on March 15th. This subathon we thought was going to go three days and uh, they really want to go with me to Las Vegas. So that's that's they want the subathon to continue on the road. So that's what they're trying to get to. And is that something <laughs> you're going to do? I told them that if the subathon makes it to my vacation, I will live stream Las Vegas, but not in the sense of like I'm putting on a GoPro camera and actually right. live streaming. I'll live stream a dinner. I'll live stream uh, uh, the casino, the hotel room. You know, like we'll we'll do a strip walk, stuff like that. But uh, it's not going to be 24-7, but they want it. And you're going to see the chat. They're already going nuts with the dogs for polka and stuff like that. But uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot You've of fun. You've created a monster, man. You've created a monster. Yeah. I know it's been a while. I Darth, I heard you wanted to do one. Um, yeah, my subathon it, it lasted sixty-eight hours, in which I had a total of seven hours sleep, which I tried to get in three different batches, each of which I woke up with a cold sweat, thinking I just died because of a stupid ass like a huge uh, horn sound or some other screaming sound <laughs> happening from a donation. I just flew up. My heart was racing, sweating and shit. I was like, well, I'm awake now. I might as well keep streaming. Oh, God, that was one of the most painful experiences I've had. I remember, that. I remember cool. that you were miserable as hell. Yeah. Well, I will tell you that, uh, Darth, because I know, you're, Darth, you said you're going to do your first one, right? Yeah, people have been asking me to do one for, like, since this beginning and... I said maybe I'd do one, but I be, like like you were saying, the sleep deprivation doesn't sound fun. So I, I was kind of back and well, forth. On, but the 29th, no. I would do one um, when the PO. What I will launches. say is that uh, now going through it, uh, one, don't drink heavily. 
Okay, that's my first advice for anybody that's doing a subathon. It's good advice. Don't go too crazy <laughs> drinking. <laughs> They're all already drinking. So once I realized that it wasn't going to go three days, I'm like, oh, crap. Because day three was I have no sleep. I'm tore up in your throat from streaming, tw you know, oh, yeah. three days straight. You literally feel like you've been at a rock concert for three days. So now, like, you can't even talk. I'm like, I'm hungover. I haven't slept. I could barely talk. And the timer says 160 hours, you know. So that was, I had to, I had to make a change a couple days in. But it was, the beginning was pretty brutal. The, the beginning was the most fun, but it was also like, oh, crap. Like, I'm in a lot of trouble. Did you end up <laughs> changing the timer? Like, is it is it on a derivative slide where the, you know, the more hours on the clock, the less each sub is worth? Or how did you handle the... No, once we hit 10 days, once we hit 10 days, we reeled in the time extensions. So uh, uh, basically that the donations give less time on the clock. So we've done that one time. We've done that one time. But the lowest we've been is today, 19 hours, and the highest we've been is 161. And today is day 20. So Jesus. yeah, I know, it's crazy. Are you prepared for a three and a half year stream when it blows up again today? And then, bro, <laughs> world record. I mean, eight hundred thirty something days is the world record. So, I mean, you're on your yeah. way, right? Isn't isn't um, she still going? I think she's so. Emily CC. Wait, yeah, my chat talks about Emily all the time. Pretty yeah, nice. she's eight hundred days. I'm not oh, prepared fuck. for eight hundred days. Uh, I'm not prepared for 800 days, but I will say I have fallen into a good routine. So I have a wife and four kids, and obviously my first priority is to my family. And uh, once this turned into a marathon instead of a sprint, there had to be like some ground rules that we set. So when I wake up in the morning, you know, shower, get changed, help get the kids to school. Then when the kids get home from school, I pause the timer, spend a little family time. And then when it's bedtime, I own bedtime for my family. So we pause the timer and I do bedtime. So I am pausing it now multiple times a day to make sure I am, you know, there for the family. Dad, dad um, first. Oh, for sure. So uh, I'm trying to be responsible, but also, you know, we're still streaming 18 hours a day. So it's still it's still crazy, but it's been good. It's been really good. I That's think... quitter talk, Aaron. Get out of here, Muffin. <laughs> I hear this and I just think, uh, man, I could do a degenerate as fuck subathon. I don't have any kids. And I have a bathroom yep. in here. See, over here in this pile of dog shit over here, there's a there's a, uh, there's a a bathroom in there. I, I literally never have to leave. All I got to do is have DoorDash deliver. And then I'm there set. There you go. For... Yeah. Huh. Meanwhile, Gazzy talks about he's got a bedroom upstairs. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's my sleeping area. That's the cuck shed, right? I, I have a white. I have is, a white. Is that, what is that? shed it's like a little loft in the oh my gosh that's my bed it looks like only a three foot person could sleep in that space it looks very small he's been exposed he's only a three foot person look at it i'm more interested in what the fuck you're wearing on you what is your shirt this is a skull like... with like gucci icons with it what are these things <laughs> LLC, L wait LLCC. Is that like a super corporation with it? Oh fucking no! I don't know either. He doesn't even know. Oh, no. Wear it. I know. It's, I got Wear a it. New Yorker. All this effort I put into the green screen. There he goes. Right out the window. There he, Proof. There he goes. Look at him. Proof. He's, He's only three up. feet tall. It's like kind of looks like an Oompa Loompa up there. It's kind of like a hamster cage, you know? He's got, like, his own little <laughs> thing he can run around in here. You just need a treadmill in there. Like the wheel. He's got a, tread he's got a treadmill underneath his desk. I gotta he's get got a standing the, the desk. Treadmill. Yeah, I, you guys ever use standing desk? I hear those are, like, way better for streaming. I think it, both of them do. I yeah. think uh, the standing desk literally has changed my life as a content creator. Yeah. I, like, totally vouch for it. Especially with just trying to get some exercise during long streams. I people could turn in channel points to make me stand up. And it actually is great. It like reminds me and I feel like it does a lot of good. Yeah, I just bought a standing desk. I have to put it together for the girlfriend, but 
I have trying to build shit, bro. I realized I'm actually garbage at building stuff. It took me like four hours to build a bookshelf yesterday. I was just going through the Netflix movies trying to put it together. And then I put the screw, the wrong screws in. So I had to pull the screws back out of the shelf to put them into the legs at the same time. No, this is on point for last epoch, but putting a bookshelf <laughs> together about was, today? was harder Perfect. than I was thinking. Yeah, no, it's Sabathon. With with the Speaking of last epoch, by the way, Favorite class? Necromancer. Necromancer. Rune Master. <laughs> okay, cool. So we're I'm not surrounded by minion Andes. There's there's someone else keeping it down for the non minion boys. Yeah. Yeah. Necro. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming both of you are minion Andes. These ways. I have no idea what you're talking about. I actually have more non minion build guides than I have minion build guides in this game. For now. But I will say second favorite, Sword and Board Paladin. So, you know, I kind of, yeah, I'll chance. move, I'll move that way. I'll move that I mean, way. Auto Bomber I, VK is really fucking solid though. And I, like I have a minion build. It's just one minion though. It's just the bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you need. That's and a, I'm that actually doesn't count. Minion. That doesn't <laughs> count. I'm actually the, the minion. The bird is the actual player. Heard the bird's OP. I haven't yet to play Falconer. Yeah, she's uh, she's pretty strong. What about Room Master makes you like Room Master? I've been playing Spellblade. That's why I got in the background right now. Um, it's uh, it, my favorite character in a game that I played for a very long time is Invoker, and he reminds Ooh. me a lot of Invoker. Okay, in Dota. You like combos? Yeah. I'd say you're a, you're a lot a you can Dota do. Player. Yeah, I'm a degenerate, Re uh, like a real degenerate, not a, like a pretend one. Oh, good. We'll get along great. I played uh, I played League, but not not Dota. I only got like thirty hours in the Dota or something. But I played League for like ten years straight. It, I did the whole sweat thing of playing it. Like you go to work, come home, play it till like four a.m. Be like, oh, okay, I'm only gonna get two hours of sleep. Get your two hours of sleep. Go back. Be like, all right, today I'm gonna sleep, and then now uh, you grind another fifteen hours or something. Yeah, we'll be down that road. Yeah, it's funny. I actually played uh, Dota semi-professionally before I started streaming. Well, really? Years, years you should see the pictures of him playing Dota. <laughs> what role were you playing? Actually. When you played pro, what role were you playing? Fifth, four or five. Is that, uh, I don't know the... Sorry, Dota, for, is that like... for league players, uh, it's like uh, support, semi-support. Oh, okay. Two different yeah, roles. Uh, split yeah. yeah, hard support and, and soft support. Yeah. Makes sense. I don't know what the other terms in league is. Play for a team called the GPG thing. in a A series, like an amateur league, if you will. Pretty fun. Yeah, it's, it's a semi. Time. Yeah, it's semi pro. And Chad is saying you look the youngest. I guess we all look old. You look like a, you got that baby hey, face. I got I got the birthday tomorrow, man. Oh, happy yeah. birthday! Congratulations! Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Birthday. Yeah. yeah. How old are you turning? Fourteen. I'm t I'm I'm <laughs> turning uh I'm I'm turning thirty for the tenth time. So it's gonna be great. <laughs> Are you turning 40? There's no shot he you're is. worthy, bro. You look wow. so great and furry. Thank yeah. you. Are you hitting on me? No, you I need to stream longer. You look too good for 40. You need to stream more. You have the soul sucked out of you. <laughs> exactly. Are you doing anything for 40? Uh, Yeah, I'll be streaming. Oh, there you go. You should start a subathon <laughs> to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, be 45 by the time it's over. <laughs> Don't yeah, say yeah. stuff like that. Don't say stuff. Our birthdays are pretty close. Mine's on the 19th. Look at that. Oh, mine's on the 23rd. Birthday. Yeah, oh, we're all God. March babies. Mine's on the 22nd. <laughs> oh, shit. DM, where you at? January 13th. Oh, so I'm, right. I'm right. way off here. I've been. I have 33. Yeah, because you and Good. I are the same age. Because I'm turning 33 as well. Yeah, I've yeah. I've got you like barely by like a couple months or something. Yeah. Do we do like That's a birthday I'm... stream? Should we do like a like a just like we all like get together and do like we go to like our own individual like birthday parties? So I'll we be have in Vegas streaming. So. We, so Aaron, not, does that count? <laughs> so Aaron, if you're going to Vegas, you're not going to the LA thing. No, I am not. Okay, so because, Imp, you said you're in L.A., right? Did I hear that right? You're in L.A.? No, 
I'm mm. I'm in Texas, but I'm from LA. Oh, okay. So that's what it was. I was gonna I say just I, more recently mm. moved to Texas. I was gonna say maybe we're all like close to LA. We can do an LA meetup thing, but I guess it's just me and you, Gazi. Me and you? Unless MP's actually getting over there. Gazi, that'll be fun. You're coming to the here. States? Yeah. You love First it here. Time? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't own a I don't own a, I don't own a body vest or anything like that, so I'll have to buy one. You might need it. I got I got a couple you can borrow, but you're good. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> How long of a flight oh, is that? It's not that bad. I get a direct flight on the first one. Like it's on the west coast, right? So it takes about eleven hours. That's not bad. It takes that's not bad at all. It takes me like eight hours from Alaska. Well, that in, that includes the, the the time change though, because you're losing time going backwards because you're going eleven hours it. of active West. flight time. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it's like when we flew to New Zealand, that was the, I don't know how many hours active flight time that was, but the trip took between twenty four and twenty seven hours. That was less fun. So was having that a one shot? Flight, I'm happy with. Sorry. Was that one shot? That was a one way, or not a one way, but that was no, no like relays. Yeah. Wow. No, no, no. You, we had a, I had a double two relays. I had one in Dubai. I think it's like nine hours to Dubai, I think, and then it was like what seventeen hours to Australia, and then a quick change there for a couple hours flight over to New Zealand. No, no, no way. That's too much flight time for me, bro. I'm good. I don't ever want to do that trip in the cattle class sitting in there in the back mooing with the other cows, man. Holy shit, dude. It was terrible. Cattle class, he says. Mooing with the other cattle. That's yeah. the first time I've heard that one. I can't I mean. Yeah, no, I, I've never flown first class, always economy class. But most of the flights no. are, you go to Washington first, so it's like always like three and a half hours from Alaska because that's the stopping point, and then it's just from there for to wherever but i'm supposed to go to serbia in june which is oh. apparently a 25 hours of travel so I'm oh, not, that's fair um, what are you going there for i got a friend who's got a birthday in june but it's june 9th and i just found out that the poe 2 bait is june 7th or not birthday a wedding so i'm like uh, i got birthdays on the mind here uh, so i'm i'm kind of like well the poe 2 beta is in june so seventh it's two days before when his wedding is on the ninth so i'm kind of like i don't know what I, i'm gonna do about it i gotta figure it out i guess the weather's not gonna be that different for oh, you COVID. you'll be used to it yeah, true enough. St Cassie, stop it. <laughs> yeah you're too sick to go you can't make it oh, man. You no, that's, that's very unfortunate but i mean a wedding i was about to say only happens once but you never know <laughs> I'll go. I'll go for one one wedding. If I miss this one, I'll, I'll hit up the next one. <laughs> yeah. Imagine the price comment on that one. Oh my god. How are you managing to have your green screen flicker between like two different colors? I'm sitting here watching this. It'll go deep green, and then it will go like yellow green. I, I think probably the webcam. It's shadowing. He's, well, it's, he's it's definitely a shadowing. Even. That's possible. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no way it's anything else. Yeah, it's his key light. They're not hitting below that. Unlucky. It's the camera auto, right? Trying to... It's very likely the camera auto. Maybe I can actually adjust that, though. What web, web webcam are you using? I Jesse? have the, the freaking... What's it called? 920, 922 Logitech ones? Ah. Yeah, he bought it in 1997. That's yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where you turn it off. Now it's now you're not focused. Whatever you did, there you go. So I have a question here. The last epoch says there's patch notes, right? I haven't got a chance to look at these yet, but, yet, but people were saying in the chat that there is nerfs to the Warlock Ward. Who here is familiar with what happened with Warlock Ward and can explain That's, it? The, those are fixes, not nerfs. Yeah, they're they're bug fixes. Yeah, those are fixes, not nerfs. Okay, so what happened? Maybe we can explain what's going on with the patch. Profane oh. Veil was was giving uh, forty percent per minion uh, as ward instead of four. Basically, what people were doing is Profane Veil has a node that eats minions, so people were putting up bone walls 
and then going over their bone walls with profane veil to generate 50 to 100,000 ward and basically make yourself unkillable and push 1,000, 2,000 corruption. <laughs> and they're, they're fixing they, that. They forgot to move the decimal point. That's all. Yeah. All right, I'm pulling this up right here. It seems like that's that's the only note that I'm seeing. Is there any other fixes here in this? It's the one point fixing dive bombs, cloud gatherer, and then yeah. uh, the rune master. Uh, the, the one rune for the scaling. One? This the the profane whatever or not profane. Start sanguine. Yeah, the you sanguine know. one. The one it, it scaled per per level instead of just to the limit that it showed. Yeah. So the the big I shouldn't say drama because it's not really drama, but ultimately last week, um, EHG has always said that they're not going to do mid season balance. So the cycles, you know, will likely be three to four months, and then um, you know if something is overtuned, if some person finds uh, some awesome interaction that wasn't seen, that kind of stuff will be balanced cycle to cycle, but bug fixing so actual problems mid cycle that's the kind of stuff they're they're going back and forth with right now and that's what they surveyed the community to see what people think and the post basically said overwhelming people thought that if it is a bug like it's an actual problem and it's not intended that should be taken care of um and then later in the week they'll release communication on actually overtuned builds and interactions if they plan on doing anything mid-cycle. I mean, that seems pretty fair. Like, I would assume ones like this where you can equip a two-hander and a shield would probably yeah, get works. fixed. Correct. Yes. So that's the kind of stuff. I, there was a survey that went out, and I even, like, yeah, I went through my 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 thoughts on it live, and it was, uh, yeah, if it's a bug, I think it should be taken care of. I think if it's an overtune or an interaction that was not seen, that's, I think that's kind of the fun in the game. You're trying to figure out stuff that people haven't figured out. I think that's okay. Uh, but the bug should be taken care of, yeah. I'm assuming they're not banning anybody who's actually using this. I was seeing streamers straight up doing the the two hand plus shield combo. Yeah. No, they weren't banning. The they board. were removing. They were removing from leaderboards. I think that's what they said. They were going to remove people who were using these um, exploitable things from the leaderboards. I didn't. I I don't think they in the survey they asked people, "Do you think people should be removed?" I don't think they've said they're going to. Uh, did they not? I I they may I have. Not. I haven't read that. If they did. I, I haven't read it up today, but I know they talked about it. I got. And in my personal up, opinion, I, in my personal opinion, I don't think I don't think they should remove people from leaderboards. Yeah, you start getting, you start when you start doing that, you start walking this line like who gets removed, who doesn't, who didn't know they were using it. I don't well, know that. that and how do they and how do they do that? Like how like what do they do? Do they scrub everybody's account and see what they played? So in the survey, to answer your question, there's two questions related to a leaderboard. So they have one that says during the cycle, a full reset to leaderboards should be done when builds or items are nerfed that are highly overperforming as a result of a bug fix or balance change. So there's a vote on that between strongly disagree and agree, right? Then there's the, during a cycle, a partial reset only affecting entries to leaderboards should be done when builds or items are nerfed that are highly overperforming as a result of a bug or balance change. So they do have a, a, a couple of these voted. Now, I don't see a results panel somewhere for me to actually see what people voted on. I'm assuming that's internal data only, but it is in the survey. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I'd be what's curious really funny with the uh, with the whole approach is like a lot of people were very upset about how they were playing a, a build that n everyone knew was broken, it wasn't working the way it was, and that the reason they wanted did the survey was to uh, alleviate themselves from any negative uh, lashback because of the fact that they had a rather bad launch, right? Um, in terms of quality, so they didn't want to piss people off, you know, in vain. So then they release their survey, and in the survey they're basically saying, "Hey, you want to, you know, insert prefix blah blah and the suffix blah blah to the question? Do you want us to fix the bug now or later?" Uh, that's basically what they're asking, right? Uh, I mean, I think Pretty it's much. a smart decision to to do this, do it this way, and I'm very happy that they are now uh, changing these things because now they can say, "Hey, we did a survey, and the majority said we're going to fix this now." But people are like very upset about the the warlock ward one now. I just recently posted a build guide using that broken node, but we 
did compensate the build's design so it would be as close to post bug fix as possible. And that one's pushing 1700 corruption. So, you know, your, your build's not broken. You just gotta play a superior build now. Like, that's not using a bug. It's just the way it is. No. It's still crazy overpowered, in my opinion. Seems like a good precedent to actually remove bugs because if they set, the, I feel like if they set the precedent that we're never going to remove bugs that are a problem ever, then you have one that's really a problem, like you literally can't die at all. I know you're saying that's kind of pseudo what the infinite ward is, or you're one shot everything, you're doing a billion damage, and it just completely ruins the game. Like, yeah, you have this precedent already set. Eventually, you're going to have to cross the line when the bug becomes an actual major issue. I mean, it's crazy to think that that a, a dev team is actually listening to a community. I've I've never heard of this. This is crazy. This is heresy. Do you yeah, guys reported. think they should remove people from the leaderboard or reset the leaderboard, or just leave it until the next cycle? I'm curious what you guys think on that. If it's, I mean, I think that I, they, oh, you go ahead, Ian. Um, I th I think I I. I th I don't know how they're going to do it, but if it, if it was something that that was clearly being abused, right? Like it's it was like the volatile zombies last um, in point nine two, right? Before they 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 fixed it now, right? People were getting to the negative thousands and thousands of mana. I can't I can't think of a world where I actually think that having negative thousands of mana is actually functional. You have to know that something's up, right? If you can be level seventy and be getting 50,000 ward, uh, you have to know something's up, right? So, uh, but again, I guess you could be totally blind to it, but uh, I'm I'm not opposed to resetting leaderboards, uh, but to be honest, my take doesn't matter because I don't even do leaderboards. I don't even care about it, so. That's how I feel too. I don't really partake in leaderboards in almost any game. I kind of just stick to myself and do a lot of the solo stuff fuck around i'm doing the curse boots mode i get to like level 20 like i mean i'm not gonna be on no leaderboard um so to me it don't matter in terms of like i'm thinking from a development point of view the only thing i would that comes to my mind is i don't want them if i'm worried about the game getting like better and better i don't want them having to go through and spend man hours to individually verify who's been using bugs and manually remove people i think that's a huge fucking waste of time so if if it comes to a point where it's like hey we need the leaderboards reset. It's completely unfair. Wipe it all. And if you're upset, your leaderboard's gone. That's a bummer. It's just for the better of the game, they're going to have to wipe it at once. Um, if if you don't want to wipe it and you say, okay, this is a bug season, then you're going to have everyone sit there and debate about like, oh, you're better than me because you use a bug or something anyway. So you're, you're fucked if you do and you're fucked if you don't. But out of the being fucked either way, I'd just rather they not spend that man hours individually pulling people from the leaderboard that just seems like a like a stupid thing to do in terms of of time utilization but that's my take on I, it i think that's it's where i people. was uh, thinking as well like as long as the process for them to say they're clearing the leaderboards of people that have whatever bug no respect if they're able to do that then that's not going to cost them a ton of man hours i think that's the best solution but as soon as we start talking about them investing a significant amount of hour man hours i mean then we have to go into the realm of what is significant amount of hours, like how many is that? But that's kind of where I'm in, uh, where the boat I'm in. As long as it's not a bunch of work to make it happen compared to just wipe it all and we're done uh, to keep the integrity of the leaderboards, then, you know, if it's a quick a quick fix to say, hey, all classes are on the leaderboards that had this or that no spec, they're going to get purged off the leaderboards. I think that's fair. But uh, as soon as we start talking about actually investing money time into making that uh, happen to solve the integrity of the leaderboards I, I agree that it's a waste of time the one move on focus on the next cycle yeah it's kind of yeah it's my take basically mm. I, I i just think if you if you don't reset it all you're doing is is you're deterring people from wanting to do leaderboards because the the first thing people are going to be doing is looking for something to exploit and then god forbid you have a player who doesn't want to use an exploit you know you're, you're going to get it's basically going to be a leaderboard of who can exploit things first it's I who has the D4 gauntlet, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> Did okay. they say they were resetting D4 gauntlet? Shrines, baby. <laughs> Perma shrine, shrine <laughs> effects before jumping into the gauntlet. Abusing <laughs> a bug that's been this in the last season where they could cast and move at the same time. I mean, the list goes on, but I mean, that's for starters. I feel like... <laughs> I think what's just... 
go, ahead. go it's okay Aaron. go and i'll go after no i was gonna say i think what's so fun about the gauntlet is just that every time you run it it feels different you know it's not repetitive gameplay i think that's my favorite thing uh gazzy when it comes to it uh you know what i'm not gonna never mind <laughs> Forget I, it wouldn't be a tavern yet. talk episode without some d4 bad in the mix um that's, that's true Okay, so the, the one thing I was thinking about, back to Imp's point here, about wasting time on the leaderboard, I feel like they're screwed either way. Because the point you're making of, of you feel like you're wasting time because someone's just going to use a bug is true. But then imagine they reset it, right? And you're a hardcore guy, and you do like what Woody did, which is he pushes the leaderboard until he dies just to see if he can go as far as he can. So then you you have your hardcore build, you do your hardcore build, you go all the way that the whole season pushes to it, and you get to whatever your rank is, number nine or something, and you're proud about where you're at. You die, and then they wipe the leaderboard, but your character's already dead because you push to the end. Right. So it's like, I get yeah. why people would be annoyed, but I just, I don't see a solution um, to solving it, it where It feels like happy. what you're saying is right. There's more probably bad in the wiping compared to just leaving it. I think there's more, I mean, I'll put it this way. I think there's more ethicalness in the leaderboard being wiped, but I think there's more upsetting people in the wiping is how I would feel. Yeah. Like the people who I have already put the effort in they are factually getting their, you know, their effort removed, basically, which is an unfair. If it feels like the cheater in in home, you know, in in school, you do your homework, you go back to school, someone cheated, you all get Fs. Like that's what it feels like, right? Which is not a good yeah. feeling. But then, in terms of like integrity of the game, you know, it feels like you kind of have to do that. But then I, now it's going to be like, uh, okay, well, if you find a bug, be hush hush about it and still, you know, push the leaderboard with your bug, but don't go too far. So it'll be like number one, but not too far. So it's not obvious. I, I don't know if there's a solution to it really. Yeah. I mean, at least they have know, leaderboards. It all comes down to the one. idea that if they're able to, to fix the, the leaderboard in entries, with a very quick and easy solution that doesn't cost them a bunch of man hours to handpick the people that have spec those nodes, that would be the best solution. But I mean, that's if the, that doesn't cost a bunch of man hours. Because it's like you guys said, there are plenty of other things I'd rather have them fix, like the flame whip's not working or the stygian coal's not working. Now, I have been told these things are coming rather soon with a fix. I'm very excited for that. But it's like I'd rather see them look at those things rather than trying to find who was, who was bug abusing in the leaderboards, right? Yeah. It's, and again, I, maybe that's internal data that they could easily say, yep, we saw this node active when they were in the in the push. But if I'm kind of with Gazzy here, I'd rather them focus on uh, other main issues as opposed to, you know, spending hundreds of hours, you know, sifting through leaderboard data. And then it kind of keeps the drama going, right? Like the, the issue, you pull someone off the leaderboard and then it just like, it never ends. People are never satisfied. I think they should just move on. Yeah, I don't know. It does make me realize, like talking about this issue, it does make me realize that it would be very hard to be running the game and to constantly run into these issues. And then every time you have to make a more or less impossible decision that's going to piss off somebody sometime. Yeah, someone's going to get stepped on. But as soon as something becomes competitive, there's always going to be people that have very, very loud vocal opinions about things. You know, it's like playing Counter-Strike. You end up with playing with one guy that just can't click heads. You just tell him, dude, you see the round thing above the enemy's shoulders? Aim at that and then click. You know, just got to tell them sometimes what they need to do. And people get upset when they're told. Something pretty interesting happened in my stream yesterday. And I, maybe it's not that interesting. There was somebody in chat. I was getting power leveled and getting power leveled like an ethical way. I went through the campaign, got my idols and passives. And then someone's like, okay, jump with me on the monolith. We'll get some levels. And there was someone in chat saying, oh, you're doing it wrong. Like I charge 5 million gold and I will take you to corruption 1900 and I will get you from level one to 80 in one hour. And I was like, holy crap. When you talk about the survey on fixing bugs and stuff like that, I didn't even know that that kind of, I know there was gold sellers, but I didn't know that kind of stuff was already happening in last epoch until that jumped into my uh, stream yesterday. And a lot of people were like, holy crap. That's but that's a perfect example of using trading. a bold or you're using a bug to exploit the community and enrich yourself, right? Like, I was like, oh, that, 
It made us a little sick, but I mean, I guess it's intended. And that's why we play COF over MG, baby. <laughs> Easy. COF. Here uh, we go. Here we go. Then again, I've just spent five freaking days trying to find a uh, one out of three different modifiers on a spider silk belt, and I still haven't found it in five days of grinding, so I can't progress further until I find it. Team MG. Team MG. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't tried the merchant Maybe. code yet. How is it? You quite enjoy it or? Uh my so my character right now has a level eight COF and almost level ten merchant's guild. So I'm trying to play both. Uh I would say if you are looking for a plethora of items, COF is better. If you are looking to target farm, it is it's it's not a debate. Like if you're looking for a certain item, you could go get it instantly. So some people say, well then what's the fun in playing the game? But uh in in getting whatever you need, MG MG is better. I do enough in my trading in PoE, bro. I don't want I don't want to do trade here too. But that's that's how I feel because in PoE you can't target farm everything. In Last Epoch you can target farm everything. That's why I don't want to play trade. I mean, I you know I got three characters. Two of them is 100. One is 97, I think. And I've played this is my tenth build, no ninth or tenth build since the launch I'm playing right now, and it's like I'm having a blast just grinding the gear. Even these five days and not finding the belt, I have so much gear for other builds. I don't even know what Correct. to do with it. And like COF, it dishes out so much loot mm -hmm. that I've had to restrict my loot filter, so I'm not looking at tier six modded items anymore. They have to be double exalted or triple or a tier 7. Otherwise, it doesn't show up. But even then, I'm dropping too many items. It's crazy. It's not the one I want, though, but I'm dropping a lot of items. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Best legendary slam you've had so far? What's your best item? Low life experimental on uh, shackles, uh, frostbite shackles. I slammed a three LP woven flesh and got vitality, life, life, triple life on a woven flesh. Which uh, basically Talons you can use on any melee build forever. Nice. Talons of Valor, um, the bow for the bird. I got uh, base critical and uh, uh, minion melee penetration. Oof. Nice. What about you, DM? Uh, for me, it was the two-handed lightning mace, and I got lightning penetration, melee lightning damage, uh, and, like, lightning percentage. I'd have to look. It might be shred armor, actually. It's pretty good. It is a 3 LP. So I'm using it on the spell blade for the, the melee lightning build. Yeah. yeah. LP3, I got, like, the peak of the mountain with, uh, coal rust for the shackles, and, uh, Levels to Chaos Bolt and percent chance for Chaos Bolt to shoot more projectiles. That was pretty nice. I think I'm mostly you're, proud you're of the shackles better. hitting the low light mod though. The experimental yeah, one because it's so messy to hit a good experimental mod on a, a exalted base basically. That is hard. That, even just finding the item is hard. It's hard. Well, you, you could craft it, but crafting it is also very messy uh, yep. <laughs> to, uh, to pull off. But it's fun though. So DM, what do you want to see come to the game? You're kind of new to Last Epoch. You play a lot of action RPGs. What yep. what do you want them to add? I feel like the thing I like most about PoE is the boss fights. Mm. Um, maybe some more. There's always the. I mean, I could do the easy answer, which is like variety of monolith content. Going to monolith, have something shakes a monolith up. Sure, we could all probably agree on that. But um, I think for me, what I like the most is the the boss chases. Like I was. Spending all last season doing the hardcore solo stuff, so found like trying to chase Shaper basically, and seeing if I could get the Shaper kill down um, for the the season with my first like hardcore solo so found season, and I died at the Shaper fight. But the the fight itself was probably the most enjoyable part of the season. I think the bosses are super well designed in Poe, so um, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, 1.1 when they say they're going to release their first sort of the pinnacle boss content because i it's not so much that boss in particular that i think is going to be super exciting as much as i want to see how they're approaching sort of the pinnacle boss concept and uh yeah that's probably my answer to that one i like that do you guys yeah, have I think something that'll be exciting do you have something in particular they talked about 
they talked about how it'll be a uh, little bit of fetch quests. Go find this and this and this and put it into this and it triggers the pinnacle boss. Looking at what EHG is like their older content compared to their new content. Like if you went and played Forge Guard and then you went and played Rune Master, you definitely notice a difference. And I would guess that uh, I would actually guess that their first Pinnacle boss is going to be pretty. It's going to be pretty good. It's going to feel different. I'm going to guess it's going to. I thought the, good. I thought the the Pinnacle boss was Le61. <laughs> Take the oh, have you seen the, the Tumblr? Have you seen my Tumblr? Somebody no. for the subathon sent me a last epoch tumbler. We're giving it oh, away tonight. Great. And on it it says LE61 failed to matchmake. They put it on <laughs> the tumbler. And the ongoing joke is that when I'm in Vegas, I gotta get a tattoo. And my options are Team Merchants Guild or LE61. If you get if you get LE if you get LE61 tattoo, that is that's quite a move. That's quite a. I don't have any tattoos. I'm not getting a freaking tattoo, but uh, it's pretty funny. At least sixty. Not Wait. Me. I'm the only tattooed guy in here. No tats. No. I got tattoos. Oh. What kind? No. Of? They're just hidden. You can't see them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have. I have. I have the uh, the business ready tattoos. They they cover up in uh, PT gear. None yet for me. Fine, I'll we can fix that in LA. Don't you worry, DM. I got. You. I'm gonna we'll get one. I'm waiting for my brother. My first tattoo is gonna be. I want to get one with my brother for like, uh, like family heritage type shit. But we're gonna yeah. do it at the same time, and it's he's always working, and I'm always working. So trying to figure out when we're gonna do it. It's been rough, and then most of the dudes here they're like actually good at tattoos. They have a really big backlog on how long it takes to get in there. You should get a D four D four S four for season four. Dude, That's I'm what you should get. Ha uh, so glad I did not get a Diablo tattoo. Could you imagine? I did like a hundred K sub goal or something, and then get a Diablo tattoo, and then here we are. Okay, funny little story segue. Uh, I was at BlizzCon twenty twenty three, and uh, at BlizzCon twenty twenty three, they had the free tattoo where they have like you could go get in line, and they've got a whole bunch of tattoo artists legitimately they were sold out of time slots in like 30 minutes of blizzcon opening so there wow. is a ton of people right now like lots of people with diablo 4 tattoos on but yeah they were given away for free okay yeah that's how they'd have to that's how that's the only reason why anybody would get a tattoo is they'd have to give it for free to be, some of them look pretty good i thought like they you've seen some of the diablo tattoos some of those look quite good um, the ones where they were like the icons, I didn't like as much, but yeah, yeah. it was all the, it was the character icons. And then it was like, what Anarius and Lilith and yeah. You know, I got uh, a yeah. Captain Fairgrave, some PUE on my arm. You do. Oh shit. Where's all the minions, Gazi? This doesn't look like you should. I just have a fuckload of skulls like hitting him in the head there, right? <laughs> well, I got our Kali <laughs> for PUE as well. Yeah. Where's the SRS? Where the, is that? That's our colleague in human form. There it is. Dude, the Here's spider the web. Skulls. What is what? It's our colleague. Holy in moly. Human form with the spiders. That is super nice. That's the one I did on stream, actually. That had to take some hours, man. That had to have been expensive and take some hours. It did, but since I streamed it, it's a business expense. Ah, <laughs> Jesus. Nice. ah the next level move, bro. Oh, Big and, brain. And it play. was a sub goal as well to do it. Oh <laughs> my god, that's five. That's five head so right there, bro. It was a sub goal and a write off. That's perfect. He's burning the candle on both ends with that one. That's fucking next brilliant. level plays right there, bro. I mean, I I don't think I would ever spend as much money as it was to get the sleeve done. On tax money. <laughs> Clever. But that was a good solution. Clever. Yeah. But now I, I don't think that real world problems require real world solutions, you know? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I also paid less taxes that year because I had more expenses on the business. So. That hot tub is yeah, 100% a business expense hot tub.
You should write they, off the they keep thing. saying They keep saying True. for me to get a hot tub for the sub subathon and write it off. You should so, do that. I am yeah. actually having a... No, I was just saying, another 10k subs and hot tub with a French maid outfit. That will do it. That would be pretty. Then you so, look like Dossie. The so the reason why the chat, you keep seeing polka and dumb little dogs and stuff like that. Gazzy, I, I think you might, and, and I know M knows this, but basically when I was setting up the subathon and setting up my bed in my studio, uh, me and my wife were talking like, what music am I going to play while I sleep? Because my microphone's not going to be on. And ultimately, we were joking around and we were looking at different music. And one of the channels was Polka. And she's like, dude, if you ever want to kill your subathon, like you've had enough, just play Polka music. Brilliant. While you, while you sleep. Yeah. And she baited uh, you, bro. so then I tell that story like day three, day four on the subathon. And I play the music. Look at the chat right now. I can't I can't even look at it. Anyways, uh, when I played the polka music, we ran a level 23 hype train. And then I did it again, and we ran a level 12 hype train. And all of a sudden, it had the complete opposite effect that the polka music actually extended the subathon. And then by day 13, I was in later hosen, and it was just a disaster. So now <laughs> that's, I can't even. You fucked up, AA Ron. I totally, I done mm -hmm. messed up. So now I have the Polka station, I have the authentic hat, I have the later hosen, and they want me to live stream later hosen in the hot tub. So the uh the subathon just continues to morph into something different. That's that's uh look look at them all. Tell, tell you what, Aaron, uh if your subathon lasts uh, to the point where you're gonna have uh your hot tub stream, are you uh are you at your vacation on the twenty fourth of March? No, it'll be over. Because that's the day I'll be in a hot tub in a French made outfit. So oh. We can do like a duo stream, both of us I... in our own hot tubs. Oh. I'm my. an empty and uh, DL. Don't I'm not going like, to lead like you guys that. out of this. If you guys want to join, you're welcome. I have hot tubs, but like no hot tub. Because green the, screen my, in chat, the tub. my chat won't let me out of when you say stuff like that. You can't say that. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. How's the, uh, you, you just recently got settled into your house like DM, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not my house. How's it feeling? Really... Book it. Yeah. Um, uh, how's it feeling? I mean, pretty good. I, the cabin I was at was really small, you know? So I didn't have much room for almost anything. The living room was also the office. And then very often I'd just sleep on the floor there in front of the TV because the upstairs was just like the attic and then there's no bedroom or anything. So the actually having room is, is good. Uh, which allows us to have like offices on opposite sides of the house and stuff, which is pretty nice too. Um, so I'm enjoying it. And actually having a garage in Alaska is like a huge W because I was so used to, if I had to go anywhere, it's like a 45 minute ordeal. You got to like scrape off the car, then you got to start it and then you got to wait for it to like hopefully turn on. It's just a whole thing. And so now, now actually having a garage is like super nice. And all my motorcycles are completely rusted now from sitting outside in the snow for two seasons. So now I got to deal with that too. But at least they're in the garage now. So no, the That's house good. is nice. It's a big W. Step in the right direction. Good for you, man. Good for That's you, awesome. Brother. I thought you were thinking about leaving Alaska or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. No, I fucking hate it yeah. here. It's dog shit. Yeah, no, it's horrible. <laughs> I fucking hate it here. It's dog shit. No, I'm, I'm I mean, out. I've seen you watch your like house tours and whatnot for quite some time now. So. Every day, I'm 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 on Zillow like every day, dude, looking at houses and just like lusting after houses. One of these days, I'm gonna be out of here, dude. I'm a hundred percent. But the problem is, all the places I'm looking at that look like I might actually be able to afford the house are in like Tennessee or Texas. And I'm a ginger, right? So I don't tan. I just molt like a lizard. So if I end up going to one of those places, I'm gonna lose multiple layers of skin on the on the reg so i'm not really sure what about europe europe yeah. i don't know i never stepped foot out of the u.s i i gotta figure out all of that i'm about to go to serbia so i gotta figure out that i've been to canada which is like the u.s plus right they have a big shopping mall i went to other US. than other than that like i haven't actually been out of out of the freedom area so i have to figure out the the rest of the world i've heard they exist i mean texas is tax-free man 
Yeah, Texas is is with Texas and Tennessee because they have no state tax. I got no state tax in Alaska, so I'm sure it's fuck not going to move from somewhere that has no state income tax to somewhere that does have state income tax, and then just be like, oh, I have twenty percent less money now. Like, I mean, North Texas gets pretty. Uh, it's it's not as extreme as Central and Southern Texas. But so then you might have huge property taxes if you buy a house. So there is there is some offset. Yeah. That's for true. the income tax, for sure. I think I the recommend the. Uh, see, uh, sorry. I re I recommend the great state of Idaho. I would recommend Idaho? Uh, seeing the world. Uh, the great state of Idaho. I don't want to see the world. I want I want to see my computer screen, bro. I just want to have a fancier hamster cage to live in. Like I don't actually oh, need to see anything. Like a real nerd, I love. Fair. It. I mean, I if I uh, let's see, Serbia. It's not that far. That's uh, what a couple hours south from me. The plane. If my geography isn't completely schmucked. Now I'm looking up taxes in Idaho. <laughs> it's it's dude, cost of living in Idaho is like unbelievably good. It five, is five point eight percent tax. But holy shit, bro! The, wait, wait, is there a city location that I'm supposed to be looking at? Because I'm looking at the equivalent of a trailer home for five hundred thousand dollars right now. <laughs> no, you should. You should be looking around anything ancillary of like outside of Boise. So not where I'm looking then. Got it. All right. I'm going to look Check elsewhere out. where there's less people and surely the prices will get lower. 500K for a trailer home. I'm telling hey, you. Hey, bro, that's the best. That's the best trailer home you're ever going to own. Better be the, the whole park. Life. <laughs> Better be the whole park. All right. I'll look in Idaho. I'll add it to the list, Aaron. It's on. It's a it's. We lived in a, not this, like, I don't know why we're talking, about, but, uh, so I grew up in California and, uh, yeah, I got a, you know, wife and four kids. And when we moved from California to Idaho, I can't, I can't even, it's, it was the best decision we ever made. It was like literally going in a time machine. It's like everyone, like everyone's friendlier and you move into the house and they're bringing you cookies and there's like events in the neighborhood and your kids go to school with the neighbor. It's like You're literally, a, it's a nice, slow pace of life. It's a nice, slow pace of life. I, I liked it till you mentioned other people and then you lost me. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like, this is not selling it to yeah, <laughs> people who show up in my house with fucking cookies. Uh, you do that in Alaska, you're dead. Be like, get off my porch. Who are you? <laughs> That's pretty that funny. Like, that sounds an awful lot like uh, some Texas uh, locations. Basically. Yeah, you don't have a reason to walk up someone's mile-long driveway unless you're doing something dumb. <laughs> yeah. My wife is in chat. She says Idaho doesn't have a big population. <sighs> it's like 1.9 million is the whole state. It's pretty damn small. God damn it. I mean, it's a huge landmass, but it's not very populated. We have to do follower-only chat. We have these fucking degenerates again. Why don't you always have a follower on mode only? Because like chatbots is like a plague. I thing. didn't. I because well, I normally haven't had a problem with this horseshit, but then the last yeah. like month it's just been terrible. You know what's hilarious is I was like ranting about how these bothers and like fake sub buyers and all this shit is is super toxic and annoying and it's fraud basically for advertisers. And then there's this guy arguing with me in chat about how it's good for the economy to have fraud and that people literally stealing from places like Walmart is also good for the economy and it's baked in. And I'm like, you, one, you're an idiot. Two, that's not how it works. So he starts getting like upset and he's like, well, you'll see or whatever. He ends up leaving the chat. And then like 30 seconds later, we get bombed. So I literally like triggered some guy who was selling these bots and he's like spamming his discord with bots. It's like, oh my fucking God. So now I have to deal with this shit constantly. Dude, we've been, I mean, during my subathon, I've gotten that garbage. I don't know how, I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times. I mean, like mo Good most streamers on the platform has follower mode only, but only to the point where you don't have to wait for following. It's just if you want to be participating in chatting, you just have to click the follow button. And then if you don't want to stay, you can unclick, click the unfollow yeah, button. I, right I, after. I, I had that, but then what happened was then the bots auto follow and I don't want 500 fake followers. Like I don't want it. Yeah, but you, like, yeah, I know first. that happened, but it, what happened is that they don't like, I haven't had a single issue with chat, chat bots in years since enabling that. What I'm Are saying is I still them? had the problem is what I'm saying. Sorry, what'd you say? I was asking Gazzy, does he have it in the one second follow only? Yeah, I only have one second follow. So if you want to chat in my chat, you click follow. One second later, you can chat in there. 
that Dude, eliminated yeah. so many bot problems. It's insane. I couldn't that believe happened. it. I had the bots do the follow where the bots started following the channel and then yeah. they started entering my giveaway. I've never seen that. <laughs> so like my my exclamation point giveaway for the subathon, the bots followed and then started entering it. We're like, what? Yeah, I've never on. seen that. I've yeah. never seen that. I've no. never seen that either. But like what I've seen is that if I notice a follow spam, uh, then I take note of it. They usually have similar names. And then after the stream or I send one of my mods to do it, they just start banning them before they even get a chance to regroup to spam any messages. So that's how I do it with the, when I see the followers spams. Because I don't have notification followers, so I see the list, right? But just having follower mode only completely eliminates the issue of, um, of those bots. And I, ju I just don't see the problem in a channel having the follower mode only. And some people argue that oh, you get raided, or they can't chat in there unless they click the follow. Oh, if they want to participate in the chat, they can click the follow. If they don't like it, they can un they click the unfollow button. It solves all of the issue with bots for me, at least. So we've been, we've been talking been. about this. Me and my team have been talking about it for a while. And I don't know, like, obviously, I'm a smaller channel. It just, for me, feels like it's uninviting if someone wants to jump in and chat, like, forcing them to hit follow. So I just, like, we've, we, I've never had a follower-only chat. I don't like so follower I just... only. I, I like for me the closest I can get to just my camera on screen, no horse shit at all on screen, no rules, no mods. Like the most it's just a a blank s stream, the better I like it. Cuz I there's multiple times that I will join a stream and like want to say something, but I'm not going to follow the guy. Like I'm just not going to cuz I don't know the guy, but he's doing something that's interesting. Maybe I just want to say hi or whatever. Like the other day I got raided by Dan's Gaming and he couldn't even say anything in chat. Because I had my stupid, you know, follower ten minute only mod, and I didn't realize it till later. So I didn't even get to, see, you know, say hi to the guy or whatever, which is cool because he's an OG of Twitch. He couldn't say hi back, so that was annoying too. So like, there's moments like that where it's like I don't, I don't like follower only mode because it, it, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I can earn the. But follow. That's like a ten minute window though, instead of just one second. Well, I was looking at the rule, but I don't know how to set it to one second. I. You you can have it so that there's no time limits that they need to wait. Because that alone is my decision to get rid of those problems. It's like somebody mentioned in chat. It, it, to me, it feels like a necessary evil. I don't have to worry. You're talking about the 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 follower only zero minute rule, like the one the. Correct. Okay, see, yeah, the, yeah. my problem with that, and that's why I was answering this. My problem with that is then the bots just spam follow you, so you'll get. Yeah. 100 200 300 followers in a row and it's like i don't want these fake followers it it when my statistic of me sending out notifications the amount of people that click through on the notifications i want the real data behind that i want to know what percentage of people are actually clicking on the notifications that's usable data but if i have these stupid fucking bots following me the data is flawed so it i don't know that bothers me yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can him. see that, but I mean, even if you don't have on the, the follower mode only, you might still encounter that issue anyway, so it's impossible to know if that number is accurate or not. Yeah, I suppose. It's a platform problem. The reality is Twitch needs to oh, solve sure. this, and I don't know why they yeah, have it the, Yeah, it's a Twitch thing. Yeah, but I'm with Darth on that. Like, if I had follow, I mean, I've, I had a thousand bot follow. It was terrible. It yeah, was it's terrible. annoying. And then like, you know, like, three weeks later, Twitch finally purged it, but it was just, you know, it's like... It's Okay. Thanks, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, getting back to <laughs> the TT game topic of last epoch. <laughs> True. Oh, right. Um, That's why we're here. Yeah, so Video games. For those of you who don't know, these tavern talks when we're drinking, having a good time, chilling with our friends, we just see where the conversation goes, and sometimes that's not always within the topic of the game. But let's, let's head back to last epoch for a bit. Um, I wanted to talk about one thing, and that is the perception. So... So we talked about the, the glitches and the abuse and stuff like that. People doing thousands and thousands upon corruption. Um, and something I believe Mike said on one of the streams he did not long ago was that the, the level of corruption that is expected out of a build that would be considered good would be being able to do about 300 corruption. Correct. And a build that can do more than 300 is really, really good. That's the expectation. Yep. Yes. Now it seems Correct. like the perception people have of the game is that if your build can't do a thousand plus, it's a bad build. Yeah. And it's so awkward. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what you guys take on it, on the, this topic is. I thought. Go I ahead, think. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, I think 
uh, in the age of build guides, and I know build guides have been around so long that it is easy to pick your favorite website and follow a guide and hit that two, three, four, five, six hundred corruption. Uh, I think if you're not following a guide and you're new to the game and you can get there completely on your own, I absolutely love that. But for the people that are following guides, uh, it makes the game it makes the game feel pretty easy. It makes the game feel pretty easy, especially with being able to go Merchants Guild now and just get the gear and get the gear immediately. They they are using this high corruption is almost as like a balancing tool. Oh, this build hit a thousand corruption. It probably needs to be reeled in a little bit, and it probably does need to be reeled in a little bit, kind of like using the leaderboards as a, as a way to find out information. But um, at least for me, a build has to be able to be fun and be around two to three hundred corruption for it to be something that needs to be put out there. I thought, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Go ahead, John. Um, I mean, for me, I think I'm probably the most casual of everyone. I don't follow build guides at all. I very rarely care where I am placed on any leaderboard or any rank. My corruption has been like five because I just die and then I make a new character and I fuck around again. So I, I for me, obviously, I'm going to have a different take on this one, which is like, I don't, in terms of mentality around what's good or not, I just care about if it's fun. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if the game's actually fun. I thought Crip put it really well in his review where he said that one of the things The Last Epoch did really well is even if you don't look up anything, your build's dog shit, the gap between, like, the worst build you can make and the best build you can make is not, like, as massive as in some of these other games. Where in PoE, you get one item, suddenly your damage is 50x or whatnot. Just, you know, bad example, but you get my point here. And I thought that was mm -hmm. a pretty astute point I hadn't really thought of as much because I'm in the situation where my builds are basically dog shit. Like I played a Paladin, got to level 85 hardcore before the game deleted my character because of the UI bug, unfortunately. I'm lucky. But um, when I was playing it, I mean, I'm crediting like 4K, like barely anything, just pushing through. But I felt like I was having fun and I felt like I could make progress and the character was getting better. I hadn't looked up anything. I was still figuring out the interactions, etc. Still am. And uh, I don't feel the need... I don't feel the need to like use a build guide because the game itself feels like it's teaching me at the right pace. Like I can just log in and casually and have fun with it, etc. And most of the people that at least interact in my chat, I don't really see like much of a mentality of people saying, you know, this is a terrible build. Like you shouldn't be using that. Or you shouldn't be using that. Like everyone just, it's probably the most relaxed ARPG I've seen. Even in D4, I saw more conversations around, that's a bad build, like, don't do that, like, more gatekeeping type of stuff. Whereas Last Epoch seems like everyone's just kind of having a good time, and I don't really know if that's so much just because the game is just launched or if that was, like, purposeful targeting, but it definitely seems like it has some of the lowest barriers to entry to actually making your character viable to doing things in the game, which I like a lot. Because once you get to corruption, it feels like, okay, just push corruption as far as you want, I've been kind of uninterested in that, to be honest. I like trying out the other characters more. But once you get the corruption, then it's just push, 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 push. Go as far as you can in hardcore until you die. But beside that, it seems like it's uh, it's enjoyable enough that you can get through most of the game until you get to, like, pushing corruption without worrying about any of it. I kind of feel like that, that all sums up pretty well. Uh, I feel like a lot of people, they forget this whole thing in today's state of... Uh, the, game, the industry is very filled up with uh, people like some of us and myself being in the forefront of creating guides to the point where, hey, this is the most effective doing X or Y, or this is the best for this, or this is a very effective, or this is a leak starter friendly, or cycle starter, and this is a good mid game, this is really good for a high end game. All those things contribute to the current state of the industry that we have where meta gaming is the way you game it's no longer meta gaming like the way you play is supposed to be efficiency based if you're not speeding it you're doing it wrong and um, that mentality is really hard to get rid of in a community especially with the ones that have been around for a long time and last epoch is designed in a way that kind of deters that from happening soon sooner rather than or later rather than sooner, if you will. And I think that's the state we're in right now where people have a higher priority or focus on making sure that they're actually having a good time, enjoying their time and invested into the game. And I think that's something the industry 
really misses out these days because it's like people just forget that the game is not that's not your second job that you come home from after your nine to five you're supposed to disconnect uh, from reality and have a good time good vibes and just have a good time with the hours you spend in front of the computer and last people is I, providing that right now I, I feel like that's a really good take i get that question a lot actually in my chat is you know hey my build's only doing 213 corruption or you know, I, I can't I can't get out of, you know, 100 corruption range or, hey, how do I get my build to 1,000 corruption? And the first question I asked them is, are you having fun? And if they say yes, and I say that you're doing it right, period, end of story. If, if I, you know, your build doesn't need to be 1,000 corruption to be good. If you're playing a video game and you're having fun, you're doing it right, period, end of story. This isn't a game where, like in PUE, like if you want to try something out, and you're like, oh, oh that didn't work out. Now I got to now I got to get scours and orbs of regret, and I got to have the currency to find the orbs of regret. It's like you can freely change whatever you want to do, and change your direction. You're like, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do this, and you're not going to get punished. Your 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 time doesn't feel wasted because of how quickly you can do these things. So I always tell people the same thing. You want to follow a build guide? Fine. Um, you want to use a build guide for inspiration for what you want to do? Perfect. That's fine too. If you don't want to play copy pasta, that's totally legit as well. But I don't feel like people should be being, uh, well, I don't do 300, so I'm bad at the game. I'm going to quit. That's just, that's, a, I think that's a, not the right way to look at it. If you're having fun, you're doing it right. End of story. Today I'm streaming. My wife's over my shoulder and she's like, how in the hell do you play this? this today, literally today. She's like, how do you still do this and have fun? I've been playing Last Epoch for over four years, 600 videos, 3,000 hours, and I'm grinding monoliths. And she's like, how in the hell do you still do this? And I was trying to answer the question um, to chat in her that there is like an unspoken end game in Last Epoch. Obviously you have the monolith, you have the arena, you have the dungeons, but part of the game's appeal Part of what, in my mind, makes Last Epoch special is that there's 120 skills and each skill could be a build. There's 120 skills and different combinations of these skills could be builds. The way that the game uh, allows you to learn through the campaign and allows you to try and make fun different interactions. There's someone in my community right now trying to make a lightning meteor paladin, which is totally possible. By the way, you know what I mean? And like, it's almost like its own end game trying to come up with these fun interactions. And to Darth's point, you don't need 300 corruption. You don't have to play an S plus meta build to have fun because there's so much to screw around with. There's so much to uh, test and have fun that it really holds your attention through these interactions. I was wondering what you guys thought about I don't know if you guys really play much of the hardcore, but the concept of corruption basically being endless and the same with the leaderboards basically being endless makes it feel like hardcore is a little different in this game where effectively your character is, I'm going to push as far as I can to my character's gone. Like I, the only reason I say this is because I'm comparing against PoE, where it's like when I'm making a hardcore character, I'm thinking I'm trying to accomplish a goal. Like I'm trying to get this boss down, this boss down, get to this, whatever. But in this game, it feels like when you have a hardcore, it's almost like Delve, where it's the character is going to go till it dies. So it feels like a very different incentive when playing hardcore. It's like you kind of already know the outcome is death at some point you're just pushing towards when your character gets deleted not like if it gets deleted whereas in poe i feel like i'm trying to accomplish set goes and i'm not sure if that's going to change when they int you know introduce like pinnacle bosses maybe that's part of the reason i'm looking forward to it is because i don't actually feel that motivated to play hardcore to be honest with you because i don't really feel like there's accomplished much as accomplishments as much as like a number that's just associated with how far I got on the hardcore and stuff like that like I'm not a leaderboard guy so I don't really care but I like personal goal accomplishments I'm not going to feel like oh a personal goal of 500 corruption but I might feel a personal goal of beating you know shaper or uber either or whatever right so that has made me not care about hardcore as much and now I'm kind of curious about going softcore maybe merchants go just because I wanted to see 
it seems like the point of the game is just to see how high of a number you can get. So I'm just kind of curious how high of a number I can get. I don't know if you guys feel that same way and what your take on hardcore is in this game, et cetera. Um, um, I right, go ahead. Sorry, I guess. Uh, for, for me, my approach with the game is different because I, I uh, spend a lot of my time build testing and I do that live on stream. So for me to be hardcore would be terrible because I'd, I'd have to start all over every time to test builds. Um, majority of my time when I play is softcore because that's all I'm doing is theory crafting, testing, checking functionalities, you know, running uh, different uh, item requirements. And in those instances, I'll be like, well, pff, that was a mistake, instantly erased, right? So that wouldn't work out for me. So hardcore has no home for me, at least currently uh, with the game, just because of how I'm, you know, working with, you know, I work with Gazzy and Aaron, obviously with Icy Veins. Uh, there's no functionality for me with hardcore. And I, I know that there is a, you know, some people are like, you know, it's hardcore or bust. That's for the dopamine dump that they want. And that's the way they play. That's for them. I mean, that's totally fine. Uh, but I feel like this game, like you were just saying, Darth, is that for the this game is is much about uh, an enjoyment experience, uh, testing out a dozen different things with the same class that you can just keep rotating through. Uh, you died. Oh, I made a mistake. All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna change it and do something different. So I mean, hardcore for me has no home. But uh, I I don't know about Aaron and Gazzy, but I I think I think they feel similar at least. <clears throat> well. I mean, in PoE, I used to race in hardcore for about five years. And the reason I stopped was because of what you were saying. It's very hard to limit test and say, here's a build which can handle this type of content with a bare minimum of this type of gearing. The only way I can verify that is if I put the, the least amount of gear on the character, test it. Oh, it's going to die 24-7. Put a little bit more gear on it, do the test again, rinse, repeat, till I reach the point where it can do this content with this little gear. Okay, now I can pre present this build guide saying you can do this, but you're going to need this and this and this. So I see the breaking points by testing these things, and that's not something I can do in hardcore. So I went to hardcore because of that for the quality of my build guides, and I have the exact same approach as I signed a contract for Ice Events for guides in uh, Last Epoch as well, so it's the exact same thing there for me. I think I think Darth to your point you you don't yeah you don't have that carrot right now and the pinnacle boss is going to give you that carrot that static content that you can chase that is a difficulty check to see if you can beat it right now not having that in my mind completion point right yeah maybe a terrible example like can you beat uber lilith right can you beat shaper can you beat um, elder, Uber Elder, like that type of thing is not currently in Last Epoch, and they tried really hard to get it in for 1.0 because it is like, you know, the campaign fully being done, the end game being sorted, and then having that I finished is not there. And I think yeah. and I think that'll be I think that'll be especially if it's a fun mechanic, like you gotta chase down these items and then you finally unlock the boss and it's like a fun boss mechanic. I like that. But to the hardcore thing, uh, I normally don't play permanent. I almost actually I never play permanent hardcore death, but I'm fine with the like you're hardcore and then when you die you transfer to softcore like that. I'm 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 better with that instead of giving up the time. Again, being having a wife and four kids, time is very important to me. So leveling that character and losing that time to do it again, it's just yeah, that's no. It was not about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually, I agree with you, Aaron. It's the, the completion of a goal, like being able to have a set goal for me is, is makes the journey feel more exciting from a content perspective. I guess you guys have your own perspective from your own content, you more of build guide makers. But for me, it's, it feels harder to be motivated to like, okay, guys, we're going to make a character. We're going to go all the way until we defeat this boss. It's like different from being able to generate enjoyability out of that progression as opposed to like i'm making a hardcore and the goal is 500 corruption it's like oh we did it 420 now we did 421 422 420 let's go it's it's kind of like different as opposed to that big boss fight in the end so i'm pretty hyped for 1.1 1 .1. yep no for no. sure i think I that uh for me personally it's the same thing i do in poe when i'm done with all of my guide stuff like there's nothing i need to test to verify or something i can do in like the permanent standard league legacy eternal realm whichever game we're talking about 
then that's where I'm like, okay, I can do whatever I want now. I can go start playing Soul Self out. I can start playing hardcore if I want to. So, for example, like the Sys Gauntlets is something I engage with every time it's around because that gets me my hardcore fix in PoE, for example. And it's the same thing with uh, with Last Epoch. As soon as I'm done, I can now do exactly whatever I want. I can go play hardcore and just do that as I'm done with my work stuff. But I don't know. I have fun. I have a lot of fun te limit testing things because it's a lot of theory crafting around it. And uh, that part is something I very much enjoy doing from all the years of playing PoE and sitting there with a the path of building tool up. <laughs> you know? Spreadsheet this, spreadsheet that, just calculation. <laughs> God, one of the you best the real things. Game? Oh. One of the best things about Last Epoch is I, I don't feel the need to sit there in that spreadsheet simulator for more time than I'm actually playing the game to figure out my build. True. Huge or the, craft, the crafting the crafting site. Craft of Exile. <laughs> craft of Exile. Oh god, dude! Yeah. I, was, I was getting so tilted when I started the game, and like before I'm even through my first campaign ever, I'm getting like spammed. Like everyone is just spamming. You need to download Path of Building. You need to go to this website. You need. There was like four different programs and eighteen goddamn dozen websites that apparently I needed to memorize before I could even be allowed to kill the first tutorial boss. It was like my dudes. Like no wonder no one plays this fucking game. Like it's impossible to get into. And that's so interesting because EHG with Last Epoch, like, uh, they don't want you ever needing a third party. That's why the loot filter Huge is w. fully integrated in game. Crafting is very straightforward, easy to learn, hard to master. Um, stash tabs, like everything they want in game, including trading. That's why the trade house exists. So, uh, totally, totally different approach, but definitely, yeah, more, a lot more manageable. I like that a lot personally. How the minions? Because I know we got minion players, right? How the minions stack up in LE for you compared to like Poe and D four is? I've heard they're quite good. Is that is that true? If you exclude, um, they're not as aggressive. Beam, then I feel like there's a there's an earlier roof cap of what you can achieve in terms of speed efficiency um, on the meta. Uh, side of things that is minion compared to non minion, unless you weave in MP's little shitbird. Because um, <laughs> that was fast. Outside of that, I feel like minion control in Last Depot is very similar to how they design minion control in Grim Dawn with the A button to you know make them move and all those things. I think that the control is fantastic. Their behavior needs a little fine tuning. They've but talked about Gazi. They've talked about stances. So, for example, yeah. set him to aggressive, set him to defensive, set him to that type of thing, which would be yeah. awesome. But they're just yeah playing playing Poe in Last Epoch. I would say that they're they're just slower and less aggressive. But oh, comparing them to a game years. that will not be made named, they're superior in every way. <laughs> superior. True. In every way. But it's funny that you mentioned the the stance park. Is it's it's actually something that I've been very vocal about and pitched to GDD. I think for the past five years, maybe six years, that I pitched that to them, and uh, eventually we got support gems, beat shield, and feeding frenzy that did this. But the trade up was an actual support gem slot for them to have that behavior. Yeah. Uh, so I'm very happy to hear that Last Epoch is looking into that type of. Um, addition when it comes to the way you summon them without requiring you to spec into them to be defensive or spec into them to be aggressive i think that would be a good way for minion build players to feel like they have more control over the, the way their their army is behaving i mean we do have something already kind of for the the uh was it is it the abomination of the golem to make him defensive posturing right mm -hmm. we can scale into that node but that's really the only instance where we have that control uh, but it, that that's going to cost you skill points, right? Which is, of course, very valuable in a skill. Um, so, but I that would be interesting if we could control the minions on an individual basis. Like, you know, skeletons do this, skeletal mages do this, golems do this. Now that, that would Dude, be... Could you imagine, you just what? sparked an idea. I don't know if any of you guys play RTS. Starcraft, Red Alert, yeah, yeah. Dawn of yeah. War, yeah. any of that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Literally, my channel was almost an RTS channel before it went action RPG. Anyways, could you imagine the minion army, but like Control One, Control Two, Control Three, Control Four, and you be... could actually individually 
grab the minions you want to go where. That would be sick. That, that would, be, would be awesome. That Just happens. Front line, uh, yeah. skellies. front line with skellies and golem, and then have your uh, have your. So it's like you can literally line. skeletons take care of that pack, mages take care of that, golem tank the dude that's killing me, right? And you had control, like you could set it to your mouse or something. So every oh, minion player in. is going to have have the top down camera over their like crooked keyboard where their hands are going like this, and the <laughs> overlay where you can see all the buttons being pressed uh, the whole time. No, then you set AP up your encounter. macros, right? So now your macros and you're counting keystrokes and your yeah, exactly. Macros are not allowed. Sorry, I mean counting other things. <laughs> I actually, don't even use macros. <laughs> Actually, I have a I have a question for for you guys. I'm just curious. Um, what do you guys feel about in this game specifically being crit is king, and dot is secondary? I feel like dot always warlock feels... team warlock. Dot always feels bad in games because they like can't crit right. Like for me, I right. always feel bad about dots in almost any game I'm playing because the dopamine of the big number good is not right. really yeah. there as much. I like the way they've done it with the overload stuff from the Warlock. It makes it feel like you can invest a little bit to it, but not fully focus on it. And it's still beneficial. That that right. balance makes it feel good, because otherwise you engage a pack of enemies. They're super scary. They can kill you. You do so much damage to them. The hundreds of hundreds of stacks of whatever, whatever doff you have. Then... You just have to stay in there and, you know, yeah. five hopefully hours they later, hopefully they're gonna they die. don't kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in a, you know, upfront damage delivery, you chunk them, you see them being chunked, and, you know, a couple hits later, they're dead. Yeah. And you don't get that approach because with a poison or sorry, with the dot builds, you'd have to ramp up that stack of those dots of damages and then wait for that to go down. And there isn't any big damage over time effects of builds in a game that I've known of that I know of that will deliver that high dot from one hit. It's a stack of something. Stu a stupid amount of stacks of ignition, stupid stacks of poison. But in many times over, it's better to have fewer of those stacks, but make every stack worth so much more in terms of damage. And, and that's when it starts right. to feel better. It also sucks from the standpoint of if you hit the enemy and you know it's going to die, but it's going to die in half a second, then you have to backtrack to get the loot, which also is like yeah. a horrible yeah. feeling yeah. from yeah. like a pacing standpoint yeah for speed and clarity, crit that's so bad. and gazzy you could probably speak on this so critical strikes in path of exile help your dots right because it gives them a it gives them a, a higher starting point correct mm -mm. right so in in last epoch it doesn't do that where crits are irrelevant when you're actually playing a dot build so they could they could do something there if they wanted to one thing i like about dots... it would open up a lot of build possibility the thing I like about dots is is when you're just blasting through and cutting them behind, and they spread. So you group them up, and then it blows up, and they spread with like the fire star their torch or something. That's the one time when dots feel pretty good to me. Yeah, it's great. I think I think in that scenario that you're talking about, micro is is the uh, when you're leveling, dots are okay because you don't really care about anything that's dropping for the most part. You just kind of run and gun and 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 leave, just get through it quickly. Like you level with a warlock, you just run, drop a fissure behind you, keep running, everything's gonna die behind you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if any of you guys have played um, Torchlight Infinite. Torchlight Infinite's yep. one of the games kind of in yep. my rotation, and they have a reap mechanic. Really, really interesting, where you can rip all of the dots out of the character. So you throw 100 dots on, and then you could like just rip it out. You can kind of do it with the Wheel of Torment um, with Warlock, too, but... Uh, I like the way the torchlight. I like the way torchlight handles it. It makes dots. That would more be fun. that would that would. It, now the problem is is the idea is good, but we really have to be able to do that amongst any class that can apply a dot. Like we got to have something like that for the rogue. We got to have something like that for the frostbite on the mage. We got to have something like that for the primalist for his application of frostbite. Like we really we would we would have to have the ability for that to happen for all classes, unless of course we just want to have one class warlock being really really good at, you know, uh, Torment. Wheel of Torment builds. I like Wheel of Torment. It's pretty busted. It's so awesome. It's so much fun. It's, fun. it's, yeah. it's so much fun. What's your favorite build so far? Wheel of DM. Torment. We can start with DM. 
I, I really like the Paladin's hammer build, man. It didn't feel particularly strong, I'll be honest. But I like enjoyed the, the play like style. Like Paladin? Yeah, yeah, like Spyro hammered in. Just felt fun mm -hmm. to play. Um, right now I'm messing around with the Flame Reeve, like melee lightning, fire converted to lightning, etc. of the Spellblade. Which feels like that could be really strong pretty soon. I'm only like level 50. I'm already like way outperforming my level 80 character. So it's like, all right, well, I'm going to keep messing around with this one. Of course, this is the lightning's the only thing that I ever seem to get drops for. So that's probably helping a good amount as well. Um, but nah, the spell blade's pretty fun right now, too. Yep. Sounds good. What about you, Aaron? Uh, I don't know my overall favorite build. Actually, I don't know. Fire Necro or Golemancer is a lot of fun, but for 1.0, it's my um, Wheel of Torment Warlock. It's so much fun. It is just an absolute blast to play. It's my favorite right now. Fair enough. Um, yeah, right now, it's it's definitely my explosive bird that thinks it's a tactical nuke on wings, bro. <laughs> the explosive dive just, bomb. Yeah, I just use it. I just use it to farm everything for all my other characters. It's just, I mean. It clears so fast, it bosses instantly. Fair enough. I like I the thematics of the Chaos Bolt Warlock. I know, it's something about it. It makes it look so beautiful. No matter oh, how Warlock is it. beautiful. The particle effects, just the way it plays, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just lights up the screen. Like I 4th know. of July all over the place. Love it. It's like, am I playing Lost Ark? What is, what is this? <laughs> I actually liked yeah. Lost Ark. Lost Ark was fine until you they start kicking you in the nuts with the honing mechanic. That is just the <laughs> worst. Yeah. That one Wait, is... What, what is this honing thing you talk about? Oh, I played Lost Ark. What's that? Oh, stop it. Stop it. No, no. I, I stop when the game really start kicking you in the nuts. And that's when those Coco Loco Moco Loco things start singing to me. And I shut that game down real quick and uninstalled it. Oh, my God. I remember <laughs> that. That was... Yeah. That was hilarious. Jesus, the story singing to me, and I'm like, hell no. I'm like, I'm outie. You're like, I'm out. <laughs> that was way too much for me, dude. Holy shit. You know what was <laughs> pretty fun in Lost Ark? PvP, they did PvP pretty fun in Lost Ark. I don't Carp know if you guys like PvP at all. The I PvP thought they was did like phenomenal. It was, it was fun yeah, in that game. Very well done. Yep. No. That I agree with. That's the only thing that I enjoyed with the game. The PvP. 100% yep. balanced. Felt good. That's exactly why I played Lost Ark was the PvP. I like the Berserker. Yeah. Play the Trindamir main, so got to play the Berserker character. It was very enjoyable. Source. I played, um, yeah. yeah, I played a Summoner till I realized that the Summoner doesn't really have minions. And that was yeah. a very disappointing thing. Kept playing for a little bit. Enjoyed PvP. Quit when the guy started singing to me. That's my Lost Ark experience. So, Gazi, every time a new game gets announced, do you immediately Google like the game's name and minions, and just to see if it has minions? Like, are you, if you're go are you gonna play Dragon's Dogma because you can p make your pawns and they're basically like AI minions? Uh, I'm I'm interested in Dragon's Dogma, but it is crashing at the same time as the PUE, right? True. With the launch and uh, the um, the last decade of me making content in PUE has proven one thing. And that is, I can never underestimate the amount of work I have to do leading into, during, and after a league launch. So I, I manage, uh, I am one of the content, well, I'm the content creator with the, the biggest guide hub of all content creators in, in the, in the um, community. And I have a team and I have my, my company and staff members like working on these things consistently. So I have to make sure that all of that is running before I can do anything else. And I've underestimated the amount of work that was once which turned into a shit show. So never again. So I hope I can make time for Dragon's Dogma, but I don't want to make any promises. But to answer your other question, um, yes, of course I Googled the game name and if there's minions. I mean, hello? Of course I do that. That's why you have kids. You're, you're working on that IRL minion build. I, I Googled IRL minions and there were like pictures of babies and shit. I, I talked to Hannah and she was like, I want the baby. I'm like, yeah, I, 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 I got to make a minion build. Hello, it's just the... Let's get to it. So, so she's the actual summoner. You're just kind of the sideshow. No, no, no. It's a two-part <laughs> ritual. I First, see. You pump, you pump in a baby, and the female pumps it out. It's a two-pump sequence. Baby. 
It's a ritual, hello? It's a two uh, pump hell sequence, no. in and out. In a nine month incubation time. You seeded the RNG for the kid is what you're saying. Exactly. Baby. I hope you got a good roll. I, hope you I got, got a, a good fantastic role. <laughs> she basically doesn't look much at all like me. She got my eyelashes, and I got long eyelashes, so she looks beautiful. And she looks mostly like my uh, my fiance. So I, I did roll a really good role on that one. Holy moly! You, you would would you would you say that you have a one button build then? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> uh. All Did right. you just ask me that? Why are they all just <laughs> drinking now? Uh, it's it's I all it, it is, it, we're on the we're on the downhill here. I can tell already. So this is where we does call uh, the does no rest for the wicked, Gazzy? Does no rest for the wicked have minions? Uh, Ooh, uh, no, no, no. I haven't had looked uh, time time no? to look it up actually. Don't think don't think it does have minions. I'll be honest. At least I didn't see. Because, it. They never reached out to me because your weapon determines your skills, right? Or something like there's something like. Uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the weapon determines how you attack, like it's Elden Ring. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I don't think there's like a summoning wand or anything. Hey, I have a question back to Ellie for a minute, God forbid. I okay. have a question. Yes. What do we think about Ward? And I, I'm going to talk about the, the abusive mechanic that was being recently exploited. I'm talking about in general. What do we think about Ward and how it relates to EHP in the game? Uh, I. For my. I like it. it. Okay. No, no, sorry. No, I just, I, I like it. It's, it's just that it, it's, it's unique. It's a very different way of approaching it. It also makes it very hard to balance. But I like it. What were you gonna say, Dean? I was gonna say my instinct is I don't like it. To be fair, I haven't really done builds that like rely on war. I'm not fucking around with war the lot. But I'm thinking back to like, okay, compared to things like for the fly mechanic which I rather liked barrier mechanic, which is a temporary, a temporary shield that then gets expired. I don't know if I necessarily like ward. It feels like HP plus. It just kind of feels like it's, it's again, HP, but with a decay portion, you know, and I, there's something about that that doesn't feel as enjoyable as a defensive layer, as opposed to like spell suppression or something. So I don't know. I'm kind of like, like, you know, the concept of it is pretty cool. I guess it's a fairly unique concept. I don't know if I, in, like, intuitively, when I saw how Ward worked, thought, I really like that. I, I kind of had the opposite impression. It's kind of like, I don't know. I kind of don't like that one. I like Ward as an add-on to life. Never been a huge low-life person. So I normally don't run low-life. I know low-life is super popular and super strong. But I like it as an add-on, not as my only defensive mechanic. That makes sense. And, I, and, and just to kind of segue specifically with Gazi and and, and uh, everybody else, really, but like we had the ward is not a new mechanic, right? Like we have ward in Path of Exile, but it's very underutilized, right? And it, it's a very, it's actually, I would probably say it's probably the hardest defensive layer for us to scale in PoE, right? Uh, but it works inherently the same way. Ward works the same but, way as. Not really. As energy shield? Is I mean, it, is is it, no, no, not not energy is shield. It? it is so the ward in Poe, right? We get it through what the iron flasks, and there's other obviously there's other mechanics that that involve it, right? Wait, is what? there? It, it, isn't the iron flask for ward? I I'm just I this is something I actually don't Wait, know at all oh, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I uh, oh, sorry. Now I'm now I'm on a point with what you're talking about. Sorry. Right. So what I'm saying is, is, is how come we don't see Ward in PUE as much as we see it in LE? Because it takes a lot of investments to set a build up to use Ward as a defensive layer. And it's not really that uh, efficient unless you have the necessary pieces to make it function. And not every build can do that in PUE. Um, right. So it's more of like it, it's very functional in the uh, um, end game kind of content, but as soon as you go beyond the regular end game content, it starts to lose value unless you have a really high end version based around it. 
and uh, it just fades in comparison to either Headhunter, Mage Blood, uh, or like Speedy Bills versus High Stacked Energy Shield, Low Life Approach. Must be a. Even. It must be like a fairly niche thing too, because I've never literally even heard of Ward other than Ward Loop Build. I haven't heard of Ward at all. I've never seen an item that interacts with really? Ward at all in my entire time of playing Poe. So I don't know if it's like. I think he wasn't even aware of the war mechanic, to be brutally honest with you. So I'm surprised yeah, to it's... hear about it. Yeah, I think, yeah, Emp, is... that I think in Last Epoch, if you are an intelligence, if you're using Int, the game pushes yeah. you to use Ward because of right. Ward retention. So yeah, um, percent per intel. it's way easier to go in that way when Last Epoch is telling you, hey, you're already using intelligence, which is going to make Ward better. So you're a caster. Just... You should definitely use this. I just feel like Ward um, is really, really strong. And it can get to uh, obscenely high levels of uh, defensive layering that not all classes can take advantage of, unless you use something like, of course, the Cleaver Solution, but then that obviously limits you on your weapon type. And I feel like if it's going to be very strong, it should be very strong outside generically for like all classes as opposed to just you know two classes the mage and the uh, acolyte i think what they could do is they could buff endurance so give like an alternative but like not too much on the buff of endurance because if they go too much now it's like okay everyone has to use yeah. endurance but just turn that knob a little bit maybe take the cap at 60 to 65 70 maybe the rolls on gear and passives are 20 percent higher so you could get higher threshold I think there could be an alternative to ward in endurance, um, but obviously you don't want the pendulum to swing, swing too, too far. far. Right. I yeah. like that you mentioned I, I endurance because, like, it, while I had the sort of when I realized what ward was in the early, I was kind of like, ah, I just like don't want to. Like, I didn't like it. It was just for whatever reason, it was off putting. I didn't want to really interact with it. But endurance, I had the opposite reaction to. I was like, this is really cool. Like when I figured out what endurance did, there's something about it that just instinctively made me really enjoy endurance. And with the threshold, and you can go. It, it, I think it's the the mini game of it. Like Ward just feels like more HP, but Endurance has this almost like resistance level mini game of let me get my threshold and then get the percentage at the right amount with the item. There's that puzzle portion I find myself enjoying. One of my favorite things in all of Poe is like, oh, I got resistance rolls. How resistance on this piece and the resistance on that piece. Oh, I can get one percent from the tree. Like those mini games of defenses feel really 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 enjoyable and i think that's why i'm not liking my ward as i think it through is it's ward for me just feels like get more of it like just have more yeah. hp just yeah. get more yeah. of a generation more have a higher ward through ret retention just get more whereas the other ones is like get this right amount and i think i like that better yeah I, i'm kind of with you on the uh, the comparison of, like i don't, don't don't get me wrong i like ward and it's a lot because a bigger number looks cool kind of thing i think that's where it makes me feel good about it but it's like you said, Ward is you have more a bigger pool to take your hits from. Whereas the Endurance is you have higher EHP. Right? It's like one of the tankiest builds I have in PUE, which is sitting on like half a million EHP, ridiculously tanky. It handles like Cirrus meteors and shit like that. It's insane. It has 3.5 thousand life. It looks like a squishy metal, you know, piece of paper. But it has a half a million EHP. It just mitigates so much. It's insane. Three and a half thousand life. It looks squishy, but it's super tanky. And it's the same kind of concept, right? Where you can have like another bill I used to play uh, with Cold Dot and whatnot sitting on 12,000 energy shield. That could never do that. It could never tank that kind of hit. Whereas my three and a half thousand life bill could do because the EHP and the mitigation value of it is, is, is there. So that's kind of like the, the design differences. And I think that. I think the biggest problem with Ward in Last Epoch is that you can just ramp it up by scaling offensive modifiers, which is why the main reason I like it is that you can weave in offensive scaling modifiers is scaling your defensive ones, like intelligence, like uh, cold resistance with the frostbite shackles and other modifiers like the chaos bolt top left node, allowing you to scale crit bolties and stuff like that and damage output from your cold rest, which is also giving you water retention. And suddenly you have more defenses and more offense because of a defensive stat. So I like double dipping because it makes gearing feel more effective that this node I'm picking up is actually not just giving me any defenses, it's also giving me the offensive scaling. Uh, but the problem is that the more you push these things, 
and the faster things like rune master and whatnot you can get such high amount of uh your pool generated consistently that it's very hard to balance that versus something as static as hey you have endurance is now capped and now you're just going to bring up your threshold which is a percent of your life that you're going to be able to cover with endurance so gazzy do you like it and again obviously there's outliers and there's different things you could do but for the most part it's like you're a rogue so you go dodge and you're a pal you're a sentinel so you go armor and you're a you're a caster so you go ward do you like that each class kind of has its main defensive layer that you go into or do you wish there was i want to be a caster but i want to go into armor you know what i mean like do you wish there was more transfer between them i think or do you that like if, that you have it? i think that if a class is designed to thematically be up in the faces of the enemies it should have an easier access to defensive layers and modifiers that allows them to do so I wouldn't say that a ward-oriented build defense is a particularly effective thing to use to sit in the face of enemies because of the fact that every time you lose something, you're going to need to rebuild that. That's how that defense scaling works. Whereas armor or endurance, a little bit of leech, you're going to spike that life back up, but you're able to mitigate more of the damage that you take, allowing you to be in, in, the, in the pack of an enemy, more like the melee-oriented one, and you know, agile, dodge-approached rogues thematically are supposed to be evasive and you know a mobile uh, kind of play style to it so thematically i like it of course i think that the diversity of being able to dip into everything or whatever i feel like with every build would be a, you know the the best solution for the sake of what we want to achieve but i also think that it's kind of important to have um thematics uh the fantasies of these type of characters yeah. the builds that you're playing needs to be in place as well it would be kind of weird if I say, well, I'm going to play a rogue, but have the defensive layers of a spell casting caster build, like a range build, or a caster having, you know, being up in the front of the enemy, being super mobile, playing like it's a rogue, but it's actually a ranged caster. I, I don't know. I like the idea of it, but I feel like the fantasy needs to be in place as well. Yeah, I like that. But, but isn't it kind of ironic that virtually all of the highest pushing builds all revolve around the same defensive layer? It's because it can be pushed. It's because it can be pushed the farthest. Like, that, yeah, that's right. what I was saying before, right? Yeah, you, you yeah. have the possibility of building ward a, is in the current state of the game to the point where you can scale that to such obnoxious levels and bake that in with mitigating modifiers to some degree, like armor, for example. Uh, right. Whereas life, there's only so much you could do. There's a much earlier ceiling to that. I just that's wish why that it's so hard to balance. To, to, to add to, to kind of both your points, you know, thematically, right, you got your sword and boards guys, right? They're coming in there. They're just brute forcing the enemies, right? You got your you got your rogues that are evasive in nature. It's it's all of those ha have inherently a very resistive hard cap, right, uh, towards the reduction chance or the dodge chance. But it seems like ward is just something that has uh, not no ceiling, but a very difficult ceiling to to not reach, right? Um, mm. It's very easy to push that. It would just be nice to have like, hey, uh, my sword and board guy, I'm I'm yoked. I can I can take just as much damage as a, you know with armor and block chance and block effectiveness as this guy can with ward. And, and so I I would like to see a primalist, you know, who just wants to go man fight everything. To have the same kind of EHPs available as a Frost Claw Rune Master, right? But we know that's not feasibly possible unless he was to put in board. Unofficial, I'm telling you right now, they're going to put a Barbarian class in the game. I'm telling you it's coming to Primalist. It's free. They'll call it a Viking or something like that. They're going to do it. They've already talked about it for years that they want that melee monster. Uh, uh, which fits perfectly for Primalist. It's gonna come. It's gonna happen. You achieve your wheel two. I, the, the way I see Dual it, wheel two handers. Yep. You know, the only thing I think of when it comes to like the defensive layers and whatnot, the way we talk about it, I feel like we are very focused on end game progression, pushing, or corruption. That seems to be like the the set that we are basing our opinions around. 
I know that I, I mean, do it's kind of our time. job. It's kind of our yeah, job. Yeah, exactly. Though. But it's because of our jobs, right? So when we look at it, we understand that, well, you're to get the highest, you're going to, if you can, you're going to want to weave into the current world and the current state of the game. DM, what's your experience not being a player that focuses a lot on high end corruption pushing, especially in the hardcore With war environment? With in particular? As well? Is that the question? In... Just generically deciding on what you think is the best approach for or more interesting approach for you to scale your defensive layer would you like to have ward on every build you play or like what, what's your take on it in general like i say what i haven't really interacted with it as much because i don't find it an enjoyable mechanic and maybe this makes me a brain dead monkey idiot when it comes to builds but if i don't find something enjoyable i'm just not going to do it i don't care if my character is worse or not i'm just not going to fucking do it so like I played mm. Hammer because I thought Hammer was fun. Well, it ends up being not that great. And everyone's telling me play this other build. I don't want to. I want to play Hammer. So I'm going to play Hammer. So it's the same thing with Ward. I don't it like Ward. It wasn't fun. I ain't going to do Ward. So my experience with it has been basically zero because I didn't like the mechanic. I didn't find it fun. However, what I did do is I spent all my time with endurances and resistances, like trying to make sure the resistance is there, make sure the endurance is there. And I focused on that a ton. You know, when I was building gear, I was like that. Oh, maybe I can slam this one. This, blah, blah, blah. Like that was fun. I liked that. So I did that. But Ward, I basically just pretended it doesn't even exist. And now that I'm doing the, the mage character, um, I'm realizing, yeah, okay, I kind of have to because it's in my passive tree and all that. So I'm going to have to figure it out here. But I mean, unless the game forces me basically to do that or die, like I'm just not going mm -hmm. to engage with it. And the answer has been I've died because you basically do have to engage with it. So at some point here, it's going to force me to learn it. And to be honest, as someone who doesn't care as climbing, I don't like that I feel like I will eventually need to learn this ward-based mechanic. It feels pigeonhole it a little bit from a casual Andy perspective. I feel like if I want to get better, I have to basically utilize Ward. That is what it seems like the game is telling me, which bums me out mildly because um, I don't like Ward. I would have been cool if there's like a overwhelming defense or indomitable, like I can be a juggernaut and have a billion HP because my armor transitions to HP at a certain percentage because of the class I win or something. Like I could have found something that fit my theme that made me like it. But instead, it feels like I have to use this weird ward mechanic, which that part's, I, to answer your question, just, you know, I, I don't like it that much, so. I think it's going to be very, very fun to see how they're going to try to find a middle ground balancing between ward and armor stacking, endurance stacking, because I actually am a very big fan of the way they handled the endurance mechanic. Because um, back in the day, people went life-based, glancing blows and I remember the, the when the ward was really kicking into the meta many years ago during the beta they had endurance working on mitigating damage on ward so people went low life having like no threshold and they just maximizing endurance because your life was already within that parameter covering your 50,000 ward pool <laughs> so that was the way people played yeah, back in that the day. was that was obscene yeah that oh. was obscene then so it'll be fun to see how they progress uh, the defensive layers of it, at least. Uh, it it actually fun. made endurance stronger that way, because having even a little bit of ward was good because your endurance was covering. Hmm. Uh, it's gonna be fun at least, but it's, it's like you said, Aaron. As well, you know, the, we don't want to push the pendulum to the point where now ward is shit. Now you're gonna do the other one. But again, that's a, a, again with the scope of looking at it for corruption, high end pushing, which, quite honestly. It's a very small percent of the player base is actually doing that. And yep. people just want to have fun, yep. like DM, for example. Just We're here That's, to play a game. And uh, I feel yourself. like Micro's doing it right. He's playing a video game and having fun. I mean, that's... I, uh, it's interesting. When I started my Falconer, everyone was like, you have to play Dive Bomb. It's probably because of Imp. It's probably the reason why. You have to play Dive Bomb. I'm like, I'm not playing Dive Bomb. They're like, why? I was like, because everyone is playing Dive Bomb. Since everyone's playing it and it's supposedly the best, I can't play it. I don't know why. I can't explain why I'm that way. So I went unarmed. I went unarmed, no weapon, Falcon Fist. And it was an it was an absolute blast. It was the fastest class I've ever played. But uh yeah, I think I think the uh we don't look at enough like is it actually enjoyable and fun to play over how high corruption can it push? So Yeah. For Spe sure. I, 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 of, I agree. Uh enjoyable and fun to play you guys tried this curse mode with the boots yet i have Wait, not you, now you get them from the cave with the bear you fight yeah. the bears to get them <laughs> yeah the, oh the cursed feather and boots man 
not the, that makes it way 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 too hard man i've lost like eight characters or something messing around with that mode already especially if you're not using a shared stash so you're just going off the loot you find in early exactly. campaign it's it's ridiculous yeah it's ridiculous i thought that was super cool that they added that in the game though yeah that was cool it was really Is nice there a that was board cool. around it no nah, it's just a it's just a troll thing like you just it's kind of hard because you can't you literally can't use uh boots because you have to wear the boots for the mode to work right so you yeah. both have one less item slot and you're you know you take a billion fucking damage it's masochist mode so basically <laughs> they took the yeah. they took the mode that was a joke like a troll mode they put in for the tryhards and they created an item around it where now you put on this item and it works as the old way in the game yeah it's okay. it's i have to try it out sounds like ridiculous fun. when you, I mean, when you start the campaign when you start the campaign you're gonna you'll see that like cave there's one bear it's like crystal cave and right before you finish the cave you turn right and hit the wall and it'll break open and there's a a cave where you fight the mama bear and get the boots <laughs> get them. and then you have to break another wall and there's papa bear there's yeah. it's a double wall <laughs> which is hilarious it's like you, you get a uh, big goldilocks there for a moment and kill three bears Hey, right. speaking of speaking of two walls uh, I noticed that I had a New villager next to me in Dwarven Realms, Mr. Darth. Uh -huh. I ah, noticed that. Did you get the did. orange shark? I did. I did. So I don't, I mean, just quick plug. I've been playing Dwarven Realms for four seasons now. And I was surprised. I was excited to see other people uh, joining me in this adventure. I actually cool. liked that game. Like, you know. It's awesome. I got sponsored for two hours. So I'm like, all right, let's try this game, see what it's about, whatever. And then I got roped into it for like six because the devs seem hilarious. I mean, it's two brothers. Yep. And I, I mean, it's just me and my brother. We're the only siblings, right? So I was kind of like, you know, I was on their side because of that. I think it's cool to see two brothers doing business together. And then uh, the dudes were hilarious. They're giving each other shit in chat. One guy was like, I made all the good parts and he made all the janky, like crappy parts. <laughs> he part, you know, like yeah. with him and stuff. So I thought that was funny. And then they put an orange shark mount for me in the game. Or you can type in like my Darth micro code or whatever and you get an orange shark. And the game was actually fun. It reminded me more of Vampire Survivors than an ARPG though. Um, it, like it is a true, it's, an, it's a really interesting game. It has the mob density of Vampire Survivors. It's third person, but the character customization of an action RPG with yeah. no campaign. And it has competitive seasons every four weeks. So imagine like PoE releasing a league every four weeks. Could you imagine that, Gazzy? You'd be like, no, f like that. It's so it's they're on season 21. It's so fast, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Maybe I need uh, what was it called again? Dwarven Dwarven Realms. Dwarven Realms. Five Dwarven bucks. Dwarven Realms. It, they, they need it, to uh, they need to hit me up. We'll, we'll <laughs> talk about it. Oh, it's fun. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Need to hit me up, he said. Gazzy yeah, yeah, wants his own little house. Well, uh, so he wants in the village, up, we'll make something work. In the starting area, in the starting area, you flip around and there's a. It triggered me when he or it triggered my thought when he said two false walls. Yeah. You blow up the stone in the starting area and there's a cave, and then you blow up another uh, wall and it takes you to this little village. And I used that it was action RPG village, but now that there's other content creators, the village has grown, and basically there's a little NPC that gives you like your specific mount in the game and maybe my mount is um my last epoch golem answer so uh maybe it's a golem in uh dwarven realms but uh yeah it's awesome i wonder the well i said put an orange well like my little emojis you know from other cons yeah. whatever the fuck twitch amounts and uh they couldn't do a well i guess Probably no. So you got a shark? So I got a shark. Got I a bet shark. there's no, like, what do they use? Like, Unreal or Unity or something? They, Probably no pre They, use, they use Unreal Engine 5. It's Unreal Engine 5. Yeah. yeah. So I got a shark instead. Yeah. It's fun, fun game, though. I have never it played it. Five bucks. It's like, it's nothing. Hello? Yeah, five bucks. Super, super cheap. I mean, doesn't take nothing to, to give it a shot. I, I think it's, you know what I like? about games recently, at least the least ones we've been covering, is they're appropriately priced. Like, I feel yeah. like Last Epoch with $35, <laughs> perfect. 
Like I mean, perfect, great price point. Yeah. Great price point. I told uh, I told them that they they're selling underselling Lost Depot. I think they could charge more for it. They probably could, but I like that they're not. I think they could, yeah. But I, yeah. I yeah. really like that they're not because it gives them the good grace. Like imagine if they were selling the game for seventy dollars, then people would be like, it needs more in game, and they would be right for seventy dollars. You would need more than just the mm -hmm. monolith. You would need the pinnacle bosses already. But they released the game in a thirty-five dollar state. It is a good, solid core game. My favorite thing about Last Epoch is I look at it and I think they don't have to fix anything. Like the game is just good. So they have some bugs and shit, and there'll be some drama around leaderboards. Who who actually cares? And then after that, it's it's all they have to do is just add shit, and it's good. They don't have to go back and change ten years of development and fix all these problems yeah. they made before they can actually go forward. So for me, I, when I realized that about the game, I was like, the game is actually fun and good, and it's a good price of thirty five dollars. And they bought themselves plenty of time by being generous enough with the price that people aren't mad as soon as they get into the game. Because you spend eighty dollars on the game and you pay for the pre-order, you're gonna be mad before you even log into the damn thing for the first time. So, uh, I yeah. absolutely agree a price. And then Dwarven Realms and the same thing. Five bucks. It looks like a game made by two dudes. I'll be honest, but it is actually pretty fun. The mechanics are enjoyable. The crafting was decent, and it seemed like a fairly complete game for five bucks. So. Then Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, another $10 game, worth the price. So, I mean, recently I've been playing these, like, games that the prices are just not ridiculous. And it's like, man, you forget that someone can sell a product without charging you $150 and then $85 Crazy. for a battle pass and all this horse shit. You can just have a game for a decent price. It's re it's it's refreshing. Did you say horse shit? Horse shit. <laughs> Is that horse. is that included in the $100 horse? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does it trip over rocks off the bat or what? <laughs> hey, hey, that's fixed now. They, oh, I, oh, yeah. Blast through the barricades this time. Uh, oh, a lot of people. Bucks, I don't know. A lot of people know this, but some of the design philosophies for Last Epoch is they they will never charge for a DLC or an expansion. So part of their thing is that obviously they'll have supporter packs like POE and they'll have cosmetic shops, but it'll be a thirty five dollar game and they will never split up the community. So you never want it to be like, I've got the DLC and my friend does it, so now we can't play together. Like, they're never going to do that. So What company um, would do that? That's weird. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> I know. So it's, um, yeah, I think, I definitely think it's appropriately priced. I agree. Yeah. I, I think told them I... that they should twi double the price and sell it at a 50% discount for the next year. Mm -hmm. So that people know that eventually it's going to go up in price. But right now they're going to maintain it at 35 because that's the that's the content they get for that price. But as soon as they got the content out, it's going to go up to 70 bucks. That's what I told them. And I really hope that they do that at some point because I think it's a game that would give people the information that their intentions is that this is going to be a $70 game. That's what I I really think they should do that. But I also never... think they should sell it with the point of, hey, it's going to be 50% discount. For you know, for the foreseeable future, because we don't the content you get in this game is thirty five dollars worth. But I don't so think they, will they ever do are, this. and I'm not. I don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to speak for them, but they're like. So I spent. I went to Gamescom Germany, which was awesome, by the way, last year, and I traveled with EHG. It's where I got this background, and uh, so I got to spend like FaceTime with them as a studio, and they're really like one. They're they're a good group of people, and uh, they're like no nonsense. So when they set out to make like the true successor to Diablo 2, they set out to make the great next great action RPG. Like you're going to not you're not going to see battle passes. You're not going to see when you log in you got hit with an advertisement. You're not going to see a hundred little red dots you got to click on on the screen and all this crap you have to clear. It's clear. You're not going to see um the cosmetic shop giving you 30 bonus coins but it's just not enough to get to the next purchase so now you might need to buy a little more and you're not yeah. going to see 800 percent off like they they truly are no nonsense and the like oh raise it to 70 dollars to drop it 50 percent. they would never do that they would just they're just like no tricks no mechanics like they're really like they're really truly a that's why i support them so much like not only do i love the game but they're you know they're not they're not following ethical. the crowd. This They're not ethical. following the this crowd. Is, this is ethical uh, gamers. I know. I know. And it's, it's a game made by games. So we always joke about in my yeah. stream that horrible Blizzard video they put out of the two developers on the couch playing the game. And, Jesus. you know, 
And then, you know, they're using a controller and they're only using basic attacks and they're dying in the dungeon, but that's those are the people that are in game design. Well, when I was in Germany, I got to spend time with Carve. You might know Carve. Do you know Carve, Gazzy? He was on stage. He's at... go way back. He's been streaming Path of Exile for many years, right. uh, many, many years ago. Exactly. So it was so interesting to me that when I was in Germany with them, Carve was there and Carve's like, yeah, you know, I stream PoE. I was on stage at Exile Con playing PoE too. And, um, you know, like a professional PoE player, he's on game design. He's on yeah. game design for Last Epoch. Like when you talk about an ethical studio and you talk about a game made by gamers, you can see the difference between maybe a game that shall not be named and a game like Last Epoch. I'm not saying the game is perfect by any means. Like there's tons of stuff they need to work on, but um, you could feel the difference. You could feel the difference. I think one of the like best. Nah, I like Carve. One of the best things they have going for them is the goodwill. If other companies are effectively tanking their own reputation, then what do you do when you're in your competition is shooting themselves in the foot? You just do nothing. Like I don't think you have to do anything other than make a good product at a good price and then just work on it. They don't need to pull any tricks or anything. They just let the competition die. And then I think they also did a brilliant play by more or less being aware of PoE seasons and sort of trying to leapfrog those. I, I, if I was making the RPG, the one thing I would not want to do is compete with PoE launches. Yeah, I mean, for me, I would, oh. I'd be avoiding that like the ab absolute plague. Be like, anytime they're launched, I'm out of here. When's the PoE 2 beta? Nothing's then. No. No, I think that's I mean, a very good way to put it. I think Torchlight Infinite is doing the same thing. The, um, I know that uh, Diablo doesn't seem to give a shit. It, it's actually rather interesting because I had this view of the world and I've, I've been in the industry for 10 years now and I thought I had a good idea of how this how these things worked. So I was under the impression that these higher ups of these companies would keep track of these things on their competitors. Like when is the, that, that game releasing? When is that game releasing or this game releasing? When do we put ours? Apparently, that's not actually true. Some companies do, but not all of them. I've had some interactions where I was just so surprised that they had no idea what I was talking about when I brought up a conversation with, I don't want to throw out any names now, but one of these individuals, and they they were like, I, yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I'm like, this was announced five days ago. How, how, how are you not? Like, I, I thought this was would be a high priority for you guys to keep track of. So apparently not all companies do this. LE is clearly clearly doing it, and I think that's very smart. I was just surprised that that wasn't the case. So not everyone's doing it. I, I just feel like they they think, you know, some companies think they're above and beyond uh, any competition. Maybe. I think, yeah, I mean... For last epoch, they haven't announced when the next cycle is coming, and obviously their strategy to that. You want to see when the competition is dropping, but then also you want to make sure that the content is ready. So it's get the content ready and see when the competition um, is dropping their time. Yeah. So Bl Blizzard's I mean, just <laughs> Blizzard's just huge. I mean, obviously, I know who you're talking about. Uh, they're just you know when you sell 20 million copies and you have a uh, player base. That is still massive, regardless of... I mean, you don't have to agree or disagree. There's still lots of people that play that game um, that don't follow Twitch and don't follow this world that is a massive, massive art audience. And when you think you're king of the mountain because you have the players for it, you're not going to... You're not going to... I mean, go, you you're not going to go to number two purchaser. and... Right? You're not going to go to number you have two. The purchasers. And, yeah. You have the purchasers for it. I don't know if you have the players for it. I don't know. I don't know. He's not the ones watching YouTube videos and streams. That's for damn sure. Yeah, at least, yeah, at least, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we there there is an elephant, it you know, in the in the back of of both PoE and and you know LE. You know, uh, some people maybe don't know that, but there is you know we have Tencent, which uh, I don't know how influential they are or not with both companies. My understanding was Tencent is they're pretty hands off on the U.S. variant, or I should say, the non-Eastern variant the non, yeah, of yeah. Uh, 
of Path of Exile and that they're they're pretty separated almost in the same way that Immortal was separated because the same thing there, right? Immortal was very separated between the Americanized and the Eastern variant. They kind of had the same split there. I am not yeah. speaking. I am not speaking for EHG. It is my understanding that the Tencent owns about less than 25%, maybe around 20% of 11th hour games, and they act as only a financer, not any decisions whatsoever with the game. So um, don't quote me. That's just that's just my thoughts on it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is this is just opinions, but it would be yeah. hard for me to think that that a, a company that has a, a significant financial stake because 20% of millions of dollars is still 20% of millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, it, it, it'd be it would be hard to think that there wouldn't be some influence to to not want to have your monetary investments be competing with each other directly at the same time. Doesn't Tencent own all of GGG or like ninety six percent? It's a, it's a like big ninety six, right? It's a yeah. big chunk. Yeah, it's yeah. a very big the chunk. Vast and so it, yes. yeah. it, it would be very weird for them to not want. To, it would be very weird for Tencent to be like, yeah, we can't wait to release. You know, Poe One League at the at the same time. You know that uh, EHG is releasing Last Epoch, right? Again, I'm not I'm not saying that um, that that's actually what's happening. Just uh, you know, it's just me peering through the looking glass, saying you know, I would think that they wouldn't want these two uh, to fight with each other directly, and I feel like they'd have a better uh, capitalizing threshold to, you know, we do you know, a, an LE cycle launch, and then we do a POE league launch, right? POE Not the is same probably time. like a rounding error for Tencent. That company is like it's massive. Enormous. Yeah. It's, oh, they yeah, are dude. enormous. So, sometimes I feel like Tencent gets used as the gamer boogeyman. Cause like, I'll talk about last epoch or something. Someone be like, well, they're owned by Tencent. And then it's like, yeah, but I if you Google how many games are owned by Tencent or have a percentage of there's some good fucking games on this list that people there's seem as games. as gamers overwhelmingly praise. So sometimes I'm curious, yeah. is it like are we shitting on it because it's China bad? Cause I, I get the argument, but like I don't sometimes I just want to know like, okay, so they own twenty percent of Tencent. What do you think that actually means? I think people have a understanding that if Tencent owns the company, the game will move from gamer focused to profit focused. So it, it comes into, hey, now we're going to see battle passes and microtransactions and pay to win and early access. And uh, that that is the concern from the player base that now it's it turns over to the, the shareholders of Tencent instead of making a quality product. That would be a fair argument I would understand. Yeah. I mean, I it's just I I think that the way at least in in my mind what a cool world we would be in for an ARPG year if we have LE cycle launch, right? And then after like 45 50 something days and then we have POE cycle launch or league launch, right? I mean, w every 45 days we have new league mechanics or cycle mechanics to work with i mean we would we'd never get bored i mean I we guess have I that right now there it. there is right now scheduled pretty much on point an arpg launching every month we have right. torch at infinite we have pue we have pue 2 on the horizon we got diablo 4 we got last epoch uh we have uh, titan quest 2 on the horizon grim dawn expansion coming up and these are like the seven or more uh, prominent titles that i can think of straight off the bat and no rest these, for the wicked. No, no rest, rest for, for the, the wicked. wicked. <laughs> There's more games in this list that can be added. Out of these, four of them are launching pretty much cons consistently. One of them has a launch every month. When I'm talking about PUE, D4, Last Epoch, and Torchlight Infinite, every month is one of those games have something happening. Every single month. And um, soon we're going to have PUE 2 in the mix. Now we have five different titles, if you will. And there's going to be something every month. Like, PU, like a ARPG genre took such a huge leap into uh, active in activeness, if you will, since D4 came around. And that there's no slowing down as PUE2 is on the horizon. It's just going to be more and more and more. And I'm super excited for it. As, as a vivid, like an avid P uh, ARPG gamer, there's, there's no stopping 
the flow of new content that we're gonna get like you, you can be an rpg gamer and the next decade you're gonna have new shit coming every month that's how it feels I like i feel like this used to be an incredibly niche category of gaming and now it feels like it's just exploding yeah it also feels like, like it, the it, definition it like... sorry go on let me cut you off continue no, no, you're, you're good. I just say it just it feels like I used to be kind of like, you know, not obviously me, but like people like me, Gazzy, Aaron, right? We just kind of just be in, in this own solitary hole. Like, you know, we're an ARPG gamer. We don't actually know anybody or have any friends that we play with because nobody plays. And now it's like every time I'm, I'm logging in, I'm seeing something about an ARPG being released. I named my channel Action RPG. <laughs> there was nothing when I started it. Oh, right. like, right. I named my channel <laughs> DM Diablo 4, and we all know how that turned out now, didn't we? <laughs> hey, hey, DM, I have a question for you. People are saying my subathon will end April 16th. Do you know why that date is synonymous or why? What's coming out on April 18th? Something's coming April 18th. I think it's the 16th. Isn't it D4 season 4? People have said oh, that would be uh, the day. Who cares? My subathon will end, Cassie. <laughs> I mean, like, what's going to happen with season 4 is people are going to log in for an hour to see what the item changes are like. If the item changes aren't basically a brand new game, everyone's going to log out. That's all it's going to happen. I usually say that, right? You get like a month of enjoyment PoE, you get a month in the last EPA, you get 10 hours of Diablo 4, then we're back in PoE again. And that's, that's usually like the kind of like a, the, the cycle we have right now. I just wish D4 had more than those 10 hours of enjoyment. I, I mean, me this. too. Then maybe my channel would still be popping off and I wouldn't be slowly on my way to a graveyard. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And uh, the most marketed game of all time is probably the biggest disappointment of, what, 23? I mean, you got to keep in mind, though, is that there are two teams for D4. You have one team that does the even seasons and one team that does the odd seasons, right? So you have season one, three, fives. Uh, those are going to be the same teams. And season two, four, and six are going to be different teams. Now, if as, as far as I know, season two was the more... Uh, if, if I could use it, and I'm using this... Step really in the right direction. Network. It was a step right, in the right, right direction. Yeah. Is season what you're saying. two yeah. would be the step in the right direction. So season four, if any season is going to be more successful, it's going to be season four because it really seems like the season two team, which is the evens team, they knew at least more so what they were looking for in the game. And so season four might actually be something not absolutely fucking terrible. Maybe but, minions yeah, are going to be great, so. Gazzy. They're going to make minions great. All right, let's not be unrealistic here. Okay. What? I was no? just saying it might be better. Okay. No. I was just saying it might be better. Companion Drew. How about that? I, 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 I didn't say we were going to turn water into wine. I just said we were, you know, going to go in the right direction. Season two is the team that Leapfrog season three is working on season four. However, going forward, they've mixed the teams. That's my understanding. In order to alleviate oh. the season three panic that happened, they had to put some more experienced people within that team. That is my understanding of the situation. That so, would be a smart decision. Mm -hmm. That would actually be a smart decision. Probably. So yeah, that there's more balance and it doesn't feel like even an odd has such a big difference. That would be actually a good leadership yeah. decision. I would tend to Or, or are you just watering down, or are you just watering down the, the good team? Look, I'm gonna put it this okay, way. Season three can't be worse, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, the only way they made season three <laughs> have any playability uh, at all was just give you a fuckload of dopamine here's a shitload of legendaries that by the way already are easy to get and then just go the boss was cool but like you know i mean come on so it, i don't think that watering down is like an issue as much it's it's if they have another season three that is a worst case scenario i think season three was i mean terrible someone at blizzard just said hold my beer so Gazzy, Gazzy, we were dying watching the last campfire. We were dying. We were howling when they're like, now let's show Necromancer running the gauntlet. And it didn't use minions. We were dying that they used Bone Spear instead of minions. Like, what is a Necromancer without minions? It's a spellcaster. You know, anyways, it's just. I mean, like, the cool. minion, the problem with Necromancer and showing that in the gauntlet that was like, oh, the gauntlet was presented as here, you gotta be pushing fast, you gotta clear it quickly. And I'm like, why are they even bringing in and showcasing a Necromancer in the first place? Necromancer is literally a wheelchair class. The only thing that makes it 
remotely okay. mobile is if you put like the giga gear replace damage modifiers with movement speed modifiers now suddenly that wheelchair has spinning rims and a little electrical engine so you can fight the uphill battles it's still a fucking wheelchair no <sighs> it could compare it could compare to hoda charge it's practically the same it's I don't care if the if oh. some of the classes are bad and some are OP. I just want to have fun playing the game. Yeah. It's like the, the Diablo is basically made for me. Being like casual RPG enjoyer, I'm just trying to get my void stones in hardcore and PoE. You know what I mean? Like it's I'm struggling. But if I can't enjoy the game, like I don't know how. Yeah, it is. What I don't it know is. how yeah. anyone's going to. I just can't log in, bro. Like I can't log in for longer than like like Gazzy's saying. I can't log in for anything longer than ten hours. It's done. But yeah. like, I, I mean, bring okay. Well, let's bring it back to Le for for a second. What kind of mechanic would you like to see for a cycle mechanic for Le? Tower Wait, like defense. something not core, something not core, something that that right, like not like the pinnacles that are going to be perma, not like the trade league that's going to be perma, right? Like something that that could end up going core, right? Something that they could say, you know, what, we this was cool. Like for example, like you know, you had like Harbinger League for Poe, right? Like something that ended up going core. Like, what was something that that you would like to see as a cycle that you can very easily implement the good. whole thing with like the rifts, right? Like, you know, breach and in PoE spawn some right. monsters. They could have a rift right. in the monoliths. Go into the rift, and now you're in another time frame zone off that area. That's there's a war going on in this area. Right. I think there's just like so that. many. I, I hope they're not afraid to like use good ideas in the other, you know, in other ARPG games. Like there's nothing wrong with, hey, this is a really cool thing in another ARPG. Let's do something like that. And that'd be kind of they're cool. not they're not like they wanted to put in like treasure goblins. Like they're okay pulling from other games, I think, if it's good ideas. Mm. Yeah. I was... And I think that's a huge W. I always thought it'd be kind of cool to have a mechanic where it's like you're racing a clone of yourself. You know how Mario Kart, you see like the ghost of yourself when you're doing a circle? Yeah. Like, I, I thought it'd be kind of cool. Like, when you enter a rift and randomly it's one of one of these is you see a clone of yourself and he's like the ultimatum guy. He talks shit to you. He's like, I can beat you with your own build. And then he goes off and like using your exact layout. He's like fast as fuck, boy. And you have to beat your own guy for bonus resources just as a seasonal mechanic or something. That'd be kind of cool because then you get shit on and you're just like, well, I got beat with my own build. Like I can't. You know, how am I going to how am I going to worry about that? I guess it would be really hard to maybe make the AI good enough to like Make give you enough build. of a challenge. Easy. Yeah, true. Bro. But then you got to play with your shit build when you get into the thing, I guess. So it's kind of <laughs> kind of balanced. I like the idea of um like a roguelike mechanic, which they I think they tried to do in PoE, but it's like you know, it's you go into this area, you push as far as you can, and then when you die, you have to start over, but uh you know, it's not like hardcore where you actually lose your character. I like that kind of idea and trying to continuously power progress your character to push farther into this. I love rogues. I like rogues. So like adding that into an action RPG. I like that idea. Do you think we're scared of seeing more crafting come to Ellie and turn into the never ending pit of crafting? Um, I guess currencies or crafting shards or crafting mechanics. No more. Give me more. No, Give me more. <laughs> I'm on the opposite. Like, don't get me wrong. I love crafting, but I don't want them to do what DOE did. The only reason I, most of us veterans that. knows how to craft everything in the game is because we were there when they gave us these little bits and pieces of tools right. to the point Since where we like, mastered it. Yeah. And then we got a little bit, uh, three months later, we got a little bit more. We mastered it on and on. Jumping into crafting now in PoE, good luck. It, it's, it's really hard to jump into. It, once you learn it, it's fine, but it's going to take you so much longer to learn because you have all of this information. Yeah. But you know, I'm, like last epoch has such a good balance of it right now. Like... I'm 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 literally in that position though in Poe. Like I joined last league, I've been learning the crafting. In fact, you're one of the people who taught me some of the basic crafting, right? And mm -hmm. as I log in, there's plenty of shit I don't know. I have I've just started learning about the menagerie crafting, for instance, right? So, I. I, I get what you're saying, but I also feel like as the example you used of like a new player where it's like good luck, it's the good luck that makes me want to log in the Path of Exile. If right now I knew everything about the game, 
I probably went through. Right now, what I feel like doing is playing Path of Exile. I'm hyped for the season. It's my favorite game right now. I just want to log in. But I think if I had already conquered all of the crafting and I felt like I knew all of the mechanics of all of the seasons and seen all of the bosses, like if I had done it all or I know it all, I'm not going to log in or feel the same drive just to make a new character that I haven't played yet. Because, I mean, I could do that in LE right now. I could make a new character. And that's what I like about LE is the ability to do the, the new characters. But the depth of PoE feeling like you're drowning in an ocean of trying to learn it all is sort of why I like the game. Yeah. Fair. I mean, it's significantly easier to play. I mean, like, you know, Gazzy and, you know, me and uh, I don't know how much Aaron played. But, like, once you've been playing it for so long, it's easier to play keep up than catch up but that's like that that's true for many things right it's it's easier to 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 learn as you go as opposed to okay here's a a, a pile of shit uh sort through it figure it out it's way easier to play keep up than catch up which is also why poe2 it looks like a really big um uh game for lots of newer players they're like yo i get to start this at the same time that everyone else did i think yeah. they could add more crafting but not over the top like i actually want a couple of uh chase you know some people use mirror or whatever you want to use like it'd be awesome to like this thing drops one in a two hundred thousand mobs a million mobs and it adds lp to an item not not hard to you know not complicated super mm. easy to understand like this drops and you can make a tier five affix a tier six or this drops right. it turns a tier six tier tier seven like, I think they could add in those uber crafting materials that doesn't add That's complexity, cool. but adds in more of a loot hunt. Right. I've also really heard good, yeah. people people bring in the the ability to perhaps add forged potential, like a, a currency that could add forged potential, hmm. which would, again, like you hit something, you're like, oh, all right, well, this is fucking trash now, fucking shattered, see ya, right? But yeah. if you could salvage the forged potential with some crazy uber you know rare uh mechanic to reset the forge potential or add a base of whatever forge potential that could be pretty fucking cool and it would and add a more lot factions, of value more factions are coming too like they're gonna add more factions yeah yeah i i'm i'm looking forward to i think what they called clans right which is basically guilds yeah um, but i think that's gonna be more of like a chat like you could chat with your friends i don't know if there's actually gonna be content for clans I mean, they could do a shared guild stash, right? Which, if you're in the guild, you can use the stash. Kind of like the same thing with Magic Find and Circle or Circle Fortune Merchants Guild, right? As long T as you're in the guild, you can use the gear. T minus 45 seconds until we see Reddit spam with posts of, my clan members cleaned out our guild bank and then G quit. I had that happen in the uh, Affliction League. We had some guys in the chat that were like, uh, we gave some corpses away, right? Uh, um, and, um, God, I put in some expensive ones, a lot of them. And there's one dude cleaned all of them. And then we were like, you can take the ones you need. If you clean the entire tab, that's for you to sell. That's not for you to use. I didn't spend 250 divines to get corpses for the guild. For you Insta to win ban. all our currency. That's not how this was supposed to work, man. <laughs> Insta ban the guild. Oh man, that was terrible. Um, on another note, though, we're uh, way past our two-hour mark, so I was thinking we could do a little wrap-up. Oh, yeah. Is there anything, any topic, any questions you guys want to bring up before we uh, we call this today? It's been great. Thank you guys so much for the yeah. invite. Just fun hanging out with the boys, you know. Good chat. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. It on. feels nice not having my stream on for a minute. <laughs> like I kind of like this. Believe it or not, this actually feels very relaxing right now to take it it's nice to take a break from streaming to do some streaming exactly doesn't make sense <laughs> <laughs> oh man well nope. they, uh for those sorry no, i was just gonna say thanks for coming on to the channel and and chatting thanks, and uh i have in the pinned comment up here and i've been doing shout outs throughout but you can find all of the fine gentlemen here in the pinned comment click on them give them a follow imps live right now as a matter of fact and Aaron, I'm sure you're going to be live again to fill out your, how many more hours? You said you have 19 hours left, right? Subathon, believe it or not, last Epoch 1.0 launch is still live for me. 
It's it's in, it's ridiculous. We're at 491 hours straight. I paused the clock for this awesome podcast. Uh, we have 19 hours left on the clock, and today is day 20 of the subathon. So if you guys want to come by, Aaron Action RPG on Twitch, come say hi. Streaming in Vegas, bro. You're, you're streaming in, in Vegas. Vegas. I'm telling you. <laughs> Uh, for those of you watching this on YouTube later, you'll find links to all participants in the descriptions down below. Guys, thanks so much for joining in. Had a blast. And good luck at the Sabathon and uh, the birthdays and everything. And I'll see you Happy in birthday Vegas. Happy birthday to him. DM, or Los, sorry, Los Angeles. And LA. I'll see you in LA. Enjoy your 89-hour flight. Right. GG, boys. <laughs> Have a good one, everyone. GG's, boys.